Fancy Dimples here for another night of streaming. Let's have a good time. I'm probably not muted right now. That was supposed to be a sound test. Oh well. Everything's fine. I just thought it'd be pretty funny to stare at you like that, that's all. I'll give you some more actual sound as well. Yeah, hi! Hello everyone! You'll notice the blind is open. That's because I've had <laughs> very little time to get ready today. My usual, hey you should probably get ready for this stream time of about 6.30 I was still asleep, taking a nap. It's okay, just regular, just normal, just normal Monday night things. Hello, hello everyone in the stream. It is very good to see you all. We've got a Luxie and a Trugs and a Cory. And a couple of people watching otherwise. And it's very, very lovely. I'm going to have a good night tonight. And not just because I'm saying so, but because it's still Monday. 
Monday holds a lot of promise. While it is the first day we need to get out of bed and go to go to work, generally. Not for everyone, that's for sure. It is still... The first day of the week, that means there's a lot of good things to come. Today, I received some interesting news that my, <laughs> my current manager, who's really, really good, um, and quite patient, that's for sure, with the various Jimble sad, sads, whatever is on my mind and bothering me, um, he has to, he's taken a new position still at AMSA, so we're not sure what that's going to look like. I don't know whether they're going to pick up another member for that team, I don't know if they're going to replace, uh, promote internally, or get someone externally. That that team is pretty capable of doing everything without a boss. Especially because I'm involved, and if it's an explicit hierarchy, I'm not gonna find it as necessary as we may want to. Um, but that's a minor shock, to be honest, to have a potential new manager, or losing one that is actually pretty good. But he is a data expert, and he's kind of been in this team that handles several applications. Um, not doing the work we're doing. And if they're setting up a data analysis section somewhere else in the organization, he should be in it. It's just the best one we have. Makes sense. But hey, that's, that's Monday for you. As always, it is a day that brings interesting news. Um, other than that, it's been a relatively normal day. It felt like the day just flew past for me. Like, I got stuck in and did general busy work style stuff and then bam it was two it was nearly two and I needed to walk the dog and I had a meeting so I was like well I'd better get the dog out of here otherwise she'll bark and bark and bark and bark and bark and bark and bark <laughs> she's a good dog I don't blame her it's just when you're having a potentially tense meeting uh, and there's someone else in the house who isn't particularly busy, you can ask him to help out, right? And get the dog out of the way. So we did. It was great. I uh, love having an excuse to go for a walk. Um, I imagine it's similar sort of terms when there is a child in the way. <laughs> Instead of the child barking, however, you do want them to be distracted by something so that you can... Pick them up, carry them away, get someone else to be a, a responsible adult for a while, and they'll sort it out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh. Otherwise, we're trying to be kind to the gold brain, so let's distract it with some Pillars of Eternity. And alt tab, which removes the sound from Pillars, because there's no way to make it say, hey, Pillars. You can simply have half of... <laughs> You can play the audio in the background, okay? I was like, no. I'm excited for Pills tonight because we're going to do more exploring in Nekataka, and it's a beautiful city. You could all have a good time taking a look through. Um, I'm also, I have been thinking about it because I saw Spider-Man last week on Wednesday instead of streaming. Also, oh, great film. I'm going to love talking about it to everyone who's seen it. That's for sure. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um didn't have me bursting into ridiculous tears the way um, Infinity War did. That was a little embarrassing. I don't know. I like Spider-Man. But there were several moments where I'm like, yep, that's it. That does it for me. Fantastic. I know I've explicitly got bad taste when it comes to movies. <laughs> um, but, oh. There's just something about the recognition that you've you've got to try. You've got to try to help. It's just the right thing to do. You need to uh, try and help and improve people's lives. Um, and that was a really good theme. Like, I don't want to give away anything because it's still rel relatively new, still in cinemas. You can't stream it at home. Otherwise, I would have just done that. Um, but it's really nice when you have a hero acting explicitly heroic in a way that costs them things. Yeah, Corey, I, I, I know you saw it relatively quickly um, and have been waiting very patiently for me to catch up, so <laughs> I'm sure we'll get on with that soon. 
But uh, ever since I missed Final Fantasy IV, I've been really excited to finish Final Fantasy IV this Wednesday. Because we will. Um, and not just because I did some grinding. And got to like level 70, 72, maybe even level 80 in one or two characters. <laughs> And we're staring at the end of the last. Uh, we're staring at the beginning of the last dungeon, so we will get through it relatively quickly. We can start Final Fantasy V, and I mean, I don't want to be the kind of person who's always looking forward and not focusing on the interesting things that are happening right in front of us. But moving along into the series is getting more and more exciting and enticing. Like four is supposedly everyone's favorite, so I'd love to have time. Not everyone's, but some important people's favorites. So it'd be nice to discuss it as a whole while we look through the, uh... I do have another day or so to grind, exactly. I could just not work tomorrow. Good, <laughs> uh, So yesterday, uh, sorry, yesterday, last week, we just did a bunch of side quests. Essentially all on this map, too. We haven't left the Queen's Birth. We went to the back alley, we found some, <laughs> we found a jewel here, dealt with that, we investigated the Adram Mill and Sansa's map emporium, and went inside the Valeria estate, and the Butato estate, argued between the two of them. I love side quests, exactly, Loxy. Don't worry about it. Picked up Constantin. <sighs> He's just got a growl on his activation, which is very weird. Yeah. Generally friendly. And we learned that there are pirates here that won't leave. And we've been asked to gently make them leave, and there's no reason for us not to send Something a bard to I them. Do for you. I'm trying to clear out some Rautai and sailors out of the tavern. The word is they like music. Sounds like a Martino plan to me. Do I have the right of it? Zilly flashes a sheepish grin and looks off in the direction of the Valeria estate. I could keep these sailors of yours. Diverted? Feel free to send them my way. And so, no bloodshed. He smiles, hopefully. Yeah, right shame there ain't more of your type quicker to the fiddle than the flail and frog. Exactly. This, like. There's no reason not to be... There's no reason to be a dick to the pirates. In fact, one of them recognized us from Pillars 1. And just starting a fight with uh, with them would probably annoy Seraphim. Oxy. Sing as anything but the Naga's nethers, won't you? Run, 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 Okay. Hi, shrimp. You come by for a drink or just a chat? What are you doing? gave us extra coin to occupy ourselves. We've been draining Valian wine cellars and trying to remember the words of Rawatai anthems. Loudly, as often as not. It does to compatriots with unrestrained glee. I'm wondering if I can say I'm going to need you and your friends to clear out and then suggest the bard. I do not understand. We have done nothing wrong. And Sel looks from his fellows back to you with a mixture of hurt and confusion. His musician playing his loop by the bridge. Best songs in the district. At first, the sailor looks like he's going to fire back with harsh language, but his expression softens. Wonder if he plays any Rawatai songs. Come on, boys, let's get out of here. He gestures with a jerk of his head. Oh, look at that! Non-violent way to solve a problem. We love those. Do a bit of. We do a little bit of fiddling. We do a little bit of flogging. That's good. We can just return to Martino. Where is Martino? Valeria say. Yeah, we'll get all of that soon. Earlier you had a question about the sewers. Can we uh, unlock this manhole? You duck down into the canal and find yourself kneeling before an iron grate. The reek of sewage wafting from the other side is powerful enough to bring tears to your eyes. The iron bars are set firmly in this, into the surrounding brick, barring any passage onward. Well, let's inspect the grate. The iron appears solid, but the exposure to the elements has worn away at the surrounding brickwork. The bars extend deeper than those evident fractures. Prying the great loose would take considerable effort. Okay, well. What about looking for structural weakness? The iron looks sturdy enough, but you are able to spot some telltale signs of corrosion between the bars and the brick. 
Now that, the defect is, uh, now that the defect is apparent, the work of bending the bars would prove a less demanding challenge. Well, let's use a pry bar to open the grate. Leveraging your weight on the pry bar causes one of the bars to snap free, leaving enough space to crawl through. You lost an item. Pry bar. You carefully squeeze through the opening, stealing yourself for what comes next. In the darkness of the tunnel, you hear quiet riching. You press on with offered sympathies. Some people succeeded, others did not. As you progress through the tunnel, a change in the air pressure catches your attention. There is an opening above your head. The walls are slick and coated with waste, but you find handholds carved on either side of a narrow passage leading up. You haul yourself out of the pit towards freedom. And through the toilet at the Valian Trading Company headquarters. Why did we do this? I don't know. It was just there. And like any good adventurer or people... Here's the thing. We had an interactable object. It gave us a couple of options to use our stats. So we... We did. Potentially this is just how you go about getting in if the Valian Trading Company hate you. In fact, that seems to be the most I likely solution. Cool, well, if it's not stealing, let's just take all this. Oh, okay. Never mind. Well. And this is another another lesson, a very important lesson, about the conservation of detail um, when it comes to describing areas. I hit tab, it highlighted the interactable object, and there was a lot of dialogue to go with it. Me tag along. The dead fire is awfully big for this little Orlin. Yes, Vela. The game told me there was stuff to do, so I'm like, sure, I'll do it. Long sickle comes for us all, yet his light shines brightest for those who embrace him. Cost me a pry bar, even if I didn't particularly need it. Vela is all too happy to just climb through after us. Alright, somebody asked us. Was it near it? No. Zali? Maybe. Speak up. My business never sits still. Nope. Alright, let's check the journal. Martino. Valera State. Oh, I've. Yeah, oh, they're not pleased. They probably won't be pleased with me for mistaking one for the other, would they? Like, one kind of feud would. Yeah, they'd be offended and really sad. Oh, well. She'd be grateful I didn't get your son killed. Hey, hey puffer. Oh, dear. Just say nice things as we go. Hey, 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 puffer. So cute. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. I think we steal everything from in here at one point. Also, that's taught Laro a lesson. I did. Oh yes, very impressive. Good job. Probably also someone in here, so we can't. Yep, several people in there. Up we go. Up. Hee hoo, Papa. No. Your other honor. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Potato! I no longer hear the perverted anthems of Rawatai echoing across Queen's birth. Martina nods with cautious approval. What the fuck, dude? The Royal Dead Fire Company sailors are gone. And Zili has a new audience. Clever. Yeah. He unceremoniously tosses you a sack of coins, his interest already elsewhere. Stick with me, and you'll be on the winning side when the dust settles. He gives you with a grin. Now what? I'm waiting on word about the next job. Pay a visit in a few days, and we will talk more. Okay. Well, we've gained some sales. That's that's pretty good. The barbarian, Seraphin or Constantin. They're both barbarians. Just one's a barbarian cipher, and one's a barbarian chanter. Yeah, Triggs, he absolutely is. Um, I could jerk about it too. It's. You must gather your 
Oh, right. Um, the other honorable barbarian. Uh, yeah, I don't remember it either. I should probably reread all of Oglyph. Oh no. What a lovely way to spend an afternoon, anyway. Ado? Seraphin, thought we agreed you'd stay out of my head. Oh, I weren't in your head, lad. You think like an ogre snores. Would be a fool and an half not to make sure them thoughts ain't full up of trouble. What do you think you're gonna find? Nothing particular, just, uh, anything. So we got new sails. Five meters combat speed, five cell health, five percent travel speed. The travel speed's pretty good. Just great to replace. Our default sails get overwritten entirely. We don't even need it. And bam, it was an upgrade. Just, just for doing some side quests. Mm, side quests, yes, baby. I have no idea if we'd get the Bardato, Bardato sales if we did another quest for them as well, but I honestly don't care. Hail and welcome to the Wild Mare, friend. Hey. A trivial man at the bar grins and motions you closer. His arms are corded th with thick muscle and cross-hatched with scars. Now, what can I do for you? Right, show me what you have, sir. If you see anything you like, you let me know. We are taking a nap. One cast of level one spells, all skills plus one, pretty good. What about three dexterity, 30% chance to reflect spells? That's pretty cool. But one to all skills is going to be more useful for us right now. I bet my tongue kind of hurts. Sorry, Velo. Now, do you see anything you like? Also get some adventurers if you'd like. Get some more crew members, but we don't need them. Uh, retrain anyone if we need to. Change up the roster. Buy and sell. You know, standard stuff. Yoke Bowl! Plus five morale if you feed him the Yoke Bowl. Fantastic. I'll buy what's the most valuable. Uh, I don't. Just the traps, I think, is something we can sell now. You know, we're going to keep all of our pets, because the pets are the most important part of the game. We're not getting rid of them. Also, clothing, without, without worrying too much, we can keep all the ingredients unless there's something we really need to buy. While we're in town, the ship doesn't need food and water. So, we're okay. I wanted to rest to give... Oh, private dance, lovely. Uh, <laughs> to give uh, Adair a rest back and remove his wound, as well as restore everyone's spells. In the meantime, can I borrow a sword? I promise to be careful. You definitely do not. I think, yeah, you can have multiple ships, but we're happy with the compensation right now, so we don't need to. Anyway, we can only go to the gullet or the sacred stair. We can't travel to these little locations yet because I haven't been there. I want to travel to the sacred stair right away. Or not. I can We will go to the sacred state pretty quickly because there is a new companion to meet. And I think we're probably gonna replace our little barbarian friend pretty quickly. Which is a shame, but he can still hang out on the ship with us. And that's good. Ah, uh, well this would be why. <clears throat> He doesn't want us to travel anywhere else in the sea because there's a cool thing here. You leave the bustle of the crowds behind, making your way through the winding path into the gullet. Uh, for a time, the path ascends the mountain. Even so, the cramped walls and run-down Huana buildings close in around you, obscuring your view. 
You come to a dark passage cutting through the mountain just wide enough to accommodate a wagon. The path here descends steadily into the rock face. After a lengthy journey through the dimly lit tunnel, you come to the gates of the gullet. The stench hits you first, a foul mixture of rot, stale air, and bodily odours. You notice the guardsman pushing a cart heaped high with mouldering food, which must account for some of the spell. Ahead, the homes of the gullet emerge as a collection of lights amid the darkness. You hear the rush of water below, and a frigid breeze wafts up from the unseen depths like an exhalation. Gullet. Take in the sight of the gullet, my friends. We'll take a poke around before we leave, but the map itself is quite pretty. It's smaller than the Queen's Birth, even though it's supposed to be a sprawling sewer, uh, not sewer, um, slum. It is still very beautifully painted. Isn't it? Traveler, have you any food? Surely you've a scrap to spare. I honestly wish I could give you some. Where are you going, Slam? This won't do. They took him. For what? Pataro's the second this month. Select Slam. Get him and to stop the running. Are Maybe. Increasing. Do they no? lie to themselves or just to us? At this rate, who'll be left to suffer the Mataru's ire? Okay. I mean, I'd love to, but not only did Slam run away. Give me a real challenge. He continues to run away. A weird guy. A damp, musky draft billows up from the chasm. Okay, well now we can talk to them. Thank you. Jeez, that was weird. A gaunt Roparo woman grabs for your leg. She pours at you with a weak grip, fingers bone thin and trembling. Mercy, traveler. Never have I been so hungry. Okay, well first off, let's give some copper. A bitter croaking laugh escapes her throat. She tosses your coins back to you with a sneer. Uh -huh. You think the merchants will sell to Roparo? You think, even if they did... The Mataru would let me keep what I bought? Well, that's... You have not been here long, stranger. Well, that's kind of dark. All right, well, let's give her some food. The woman snatches the food from her hands with surprising speed, eyes darting a glance for any onlookers before she shoves it between her teeth. She gnaws desperately, swallows, chokes, chews again, and speaks with a mouth half full from the next bite. You must light him, aid shark meat. I don't know if it randomly chooses or just chooses the first food in your inventory. Thank you. I'll share it, I swear. Thank you, traveler. The Rapari touches two gaunt knuckled fingers to her lips. Do you have no access to food? Always there is prize share. But the pile has grown leaner these years. It's prize share. A Hawana term referring to the distribution of wealth little falls to our pile that is not rotten or sour from this week and maybe before. What do you mean? She shakes her head. Forgive me, I say too much. If you would know more, ask Inoi. Well, we will. Our elder listens to those in need, and he speaks out of earshot of the guards. He's there, in the house to the right when you cross the bridge. He can speak of the hunger. Her quavering arm points toward the southeast. Who's the lead around here? She chuckles darkly. <laughs> the gullet is a lawless place. Forgotten. The only authority here is the Matarus, and they don't work on our behalf. But if it is a wise man you want, seek Anoy in his home. He tries to keep us safe and fed. He does not always succeed, but he does try. Trying's worth a lot down here. That's a very cool statement there. Sad, indeed, but trying's worth a lot down here? That says a lot. Let's walk away. Okay, so finally glad the game started responding and let us actually help. Half-eaten half food scraps litter the pile. A rancid stench rises from it. You think I see a Hitanga will come for us? 
A watcher? And a gullet? Are you a pirate? You don't look like a reparer. Yeah. Sweet incense mask theater of the offerings. Rotten fruit and spoiled fish. What's in the cave? You enter a dim alleyway that reeks of urine and torch smoke. Ah, piss. There's piss in the cave. A long passage stretches to your left and right. Shadows move in the guttering torchlight, but they're nothing more than shapes at this distance. The chatter and bustle of the gullet continues behind you. Well, let's go lift. This tunnel ends, but another branch is off. The only sounds are the cracking of torches and the steady drip of water. Well, let's go right then. And come to a door. It's as solid as a stone around it, with no handle and no knob. It's deathly quiet on the other side. You rap gently on the door, and the sound echoes as if in a wide, empty space. Let's turn around. Tunnel ends, but another. Uh, go left. Uh, the alley winds on ahead of you. To the right, you hear din and multitude and smell the musk of many bodies. Let's go forward. You trudge along the darkened passage and reach an intersection. The tunnel branches off to the right. You hear a distant murmur of voices down the darkened path, but see no one. So, this sort of 3D mapping, like old text adventure style dungeons confuse the fuck out of me because I'm really bad at visualizing the space. Doesn't mean I'm not going to continue poking about it though. Let's take a look at distant murmur of voices. Hell yeah, go right. The tunnel branches to the left. The floor around the entrance is sputtered with something thick and dark as tar. It looks like Svef. Svef being a drug. Near catatonic state. Go left. A handful of guards emerge and block your way, crossing their thick arms over your ch over their chests. One of them spits a viscous black glob at your feet. He rolls a dark plug between his teeth. Better head back, friend. It's the invitation only passed here. Well, there's no reason for us to continue, right? Go right. Uh, go right, I think. There you go. On your left is an abandoned merchant stall displaying cheap jewellery. Well, let's inspect the merchant stall using our perception and streetwise. Watch your only check. Well, laid out of various trinkets made from junk. Necklaces strung with fish bones and shoe buckles and bracelets made with shard of broken glass. But the curtain sways and flaps as if stirred by a draft. You twitch it aside and discover a secret passageway. Good job, Slam. Let's go through the curtain behind the merchant stall. You check the tunnel one more time to make sure no one is watching. Then you slip behind the curtain and into another passageway. You're walking along when several hooded figures materialize out of the darkness. Not so fast. You gotta pay a toll if you want to visit Deliver's Row. Somewhere beneath the gullet is a loose confederation of thugs, thieves, black marketeers, and other seedy individuals. Known as Deliver's Row, it's a place where most things can be found for the right price and word always travels quickly. There's not a lot of point. Like there was a man with a scar. I paid him. Let's get diplomacy. Let's use our stats. Good folk, open markets are vital to a healthy economy. Would you turn away a paying customer? They look at each other and shrug. Damn it. Stupid free me. <laughs> They're not fooled by Reaganomics. Quick, let's lie to him. Last time I came through, there was a man with a scar. I, play I paid him. They shrug and stand aside. Oh, 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 fantastic. You continue on and the rough stone changes to smooth cobbles underneath your feet. One lamp light shivers ahead as the yellow and tremulous as fear itself. Before you is a narrow cavern that writhes with, writhes with shadows and echoes with the music of jingling coins. Enter Delver's Row. I'm... Apparently really good at not doing what I'm told and wandering through all of the map and exploring all sorts of other places before ending up going where I'm supposed to go. Because you'd think I'd go speak to Enoi as I was gently guided by the game. I'm like, no, I'm going to explore a weird hidden market for no reason. Keep it down. There's Valian down here, cutthroat, thugs, pirates. And there's a street merchant. Looking for something to sharpen the senses. 
To help you leave your sorrows behind, I'll go what you need. To leave your sorrows behind. Alright, let me see what you have. Coral snuff, math char, zvef tarutaruchu. Taru <coughs> Turuchu. Oh, I love fantasy drugs. Uh, I don't like how they're nearly always bad as well. But I just find them fascinating. Native corals crushed into, crushed into a fine powder mixed with gunpowder. Inhaled through the nose, this potent narcotic produces an intense surge of focus and euphoria, followed by crushing lethargy, often accompanied by nosebleeds, nosebleeds and fatigue. These drawbacks have not reduced his popularity with the people of the Deadfire. Well, no shit, man. Drugs are fun. I'd also like uh, more of them that just exist as, like, they don't provide any combat benefit. <laughs> I mean, mechanically as a game, it's hard to tell. Um, I found it very funny. There was about 20 or 30 episodes into Campaign 2 of Critical Role. Um, the characters and players finally take drugs they bought in like episode 12. And that was fun. Uh, and I remember being on Twitter, some very vocal person was like, Hey Matt, remember, hugs not drugs. They probably shouldn't do this. And <laughs> uh, you have greatly misjudged the cast and what they get up to. Remember when they took a week off Critical Role's weekly broadcast so they could all go to Burning Man? Like multiple weeks, uh, multiple years in a row? Jesus. What it was, was a general good time when Matt had to test his narr narration abilities. It's fucking great. Anyway, we will buy this just for crafting purposes. Rune powder. That's an ingredient, not a drug. It's useful. What a white leaf. Keyword, drug. Concentrate, uh, like concentration, just the status as well as some will and some health restored. Uh, Adair really likes that. Ripple sponge is interesting. Made from the sponges along the rocky coast of Rautai, Ripple Sponge is ground finely and inhaled. It's often used on long sea voyages, for it has a soothing, calming effect which helps in tackling extended in tackling extended periods of strenuous activity. Resolve, per <laughs> perception, and intellect. Just for fun. Yeah, I remember even um Morphin being needed to renamed Medex for Fallout 3, and that caused uh, some issues. Where was Fallout 2? Tyra 2, literally chewy to the Juana, is made from the root of the ra uh, Ratiti plant. It is enjoyed by laborers, wayfarers, and farmers, and all who swear by the boost of energy it provides. Usually, those who overindulge find that they feel sluggish and disoriented when they stop. That's kind of like coffee. <laughs> Actually, if it's chew. Um, and it's a plant that's gonna be cover. <laughs> anyway, I don't see the need to purchase them, except maybe some solution, but it is interesting. I like that it's here. We can't steal more of them as much as we'd like to, because there are too many people around. Furtive whispers and footsteps rise from the lower street. Several paintings look identical, down to the signatures copied in the corners. Ooh, forgers, forgeries. I better right click and save. A figure in the shadows looks up at your approach, pursing his lips together in a crooked line. I think you made a wrong turn, Bilger. You don't belong in the row. Actually, the smell of this shithole reminds me of home. He raises an eyebrow at this. Long moments pass as he casually looks you up and down. Wink at him. Either you don't know who I am, or you've had a few too many, eh? Don't matter. You sure as shit ain't the law. Mm hmm. He glances around the alley before continuing. You looking to commission an artist? You'll find none better in Nekataka, Bilger. He lightly traces a finger across the hilt of an emerald and across its stiletto hidden within the folds of a dark leather tunic. His narrowed eyes seem to dance in the magical light as the gemstone pulses with a caustic glow. The right half of his mouth ascends menacingly as he dips his head and peers at you from underneath his brow. You're an assassin. You are answered with a thin-lipped scowl as your words echo throughout the alley. Would you be interested in joining my crew? Sorry, Bilger. I work alone. I'll think about it. With a shrug, he leans back against the wall. 
Okay, dude. I'm glad you're an assassin. I don't need one right now. Generally, I kill myself. The alley narrows to a dead end. No, I, I, do, I do my killing myself, right? Slam Shadows, despite his silly name, is a dangerous man as well. What do we have here? What did you find? Things to steal. Go through all the stuff, steal all of their armor, get a crowbar back. I see where you're going with that. I do. Alright. Jeez, complicated. There. What did I tell you? The Red Hand, an exceptional archivist. Fantastic. Fire, double barrel, fires two shots before reloading. Jeez, that's fantastic. This calls for it. There. Well, I'm glad we I could steal all that bad. cool stuff. The Lord's foot and an heavy bullet, our cap. Not sure. Our buyer in Defiance Bay needs another shipment of Sveth. Not so loudly, but send it at once. Hi, everyone. I didn't just enter through your secret um, vault. has not seen you before. You must be new. New or very good at disguises. <laughs> The man chuckles. He peers at you through half-moon spectacles. His face is hidden behind a thick but well-groomed beard, and his eyes constantly dart between you and the doorway. Also, hi Kelly, good to see you tonight. I love raising stats, you just remember to go wink-wonk. Ah, but you are the one the Ropiro speak of. They are most fond of you, but not so discreet. <laughs> he waggles a finger. But how did you hear about this place? Wait, no, do not tell me. Sometimes it is better not to know. Alright, dude, I won't tell you shit then. I've only been offered, like, the services of an assassin because we said we like, uh, we remember the smell of shit well and then winked at him. There is something I can get for you, yes? Tell me quietly. He leans in. I need supplies. Of course. Only do not tell anyone where you got them. This is a lot of effort for a random merchant. Well, some legendary- wow. Some legendary light armor for rogues as well, because it, all of its enchantments of her, um, <laughs> staying alive in combat. Yeah, see? Useful, but not that useful. Uh, cool, we need literally none, none of this. Thank you very much. But I will do one thing. Now that we've got a very cool Archibus, we'll sell just a regular exceptional one, right? Some of these. Don't need those. There you go. Thanks, we give you the opportunity to give us some money. Ooh. Yoink. Oh, thugs. No shops this way, stranger. The thug holds up surprisingly smooth hands, stepping in front of you. What are you guarding? You think I'm standing here so I can tell you about it? Come on, go. He flicks his fingers in a shooing motion. His nails shine in the torchlight. How do I get permission to pass? <sighs> That's up to Dario. He drums his long nails against his hip. Okay, bye. The grizzled old armoire... <clears throat> Armour woman looks as the <sighs> looks like she's been left in the sun to dry. Her skin is so worn and withered it's hard to tell her wrinkles from her scars. You need a blade or a bludgeon or some sturdy armor. Umani has what you seek. The old woman gives you a grin that multiplies the wrinkles in her face. Okay. Old Umani's stock is tested in the hands and throats of the fiercest sorts in the gullet. Never will you find a better selection. Alright. A hat that gives you immunity drops while they carry at least one injury. Oof. Grants us the second win in athletics. <laughs> wow. That's pretty good too. Like, these are good random magic items to have, but... Don't need to buy them right yet. Stray dog! I think... Algol. 20% constitutional affliction duration and regain some health when they kill an enemy. That's pretty good. Welcome. Something I can do. Welcome aboard, doggo. 
but well, we should actually keep that doggo. Hmm. We're a two-dog party here. Something approaches. You smell of forbidding frozen lands with secrets shrouded in ice. Cloak Delph. You smell of forbidding. You smell of forbidding frozen lands with secrets shrouded in ice. The Spindle Man. What is this kith creature? The Vithrak cocks his head and focuses his many eyes on you. His strange companions also stare at you with unnatural intensity. All right, I'll go first. <clears throat> is it true some of your kind are covered in soft fur that feels good to pet? He clears his throat. One of the Vithrak's eyes shift towards the dare. After a moment, it shifts back to you. What secrets does it bring? You feel a gentle scratching in your head. Another voice speaks directly into your mind. Let us see. Let us see. The Vithrak clicks its claws together in delight. Keep your weather eye open, Cap. A fork probe ain't much to worry over, but I'll be a two-headed ogre if that's the only trick up them silk sleeves. Seraphin scrutinizes the Vithrak. Meanwhile, the Vithrak scrabbles and slithers deeper into your mind. What secrets do you want? Any. All. Oh. It plunges into your thoughts and fumbles for one. You also taste the thoughts of other minds. Will you deny us? We are a cipher. The creature's pleading strikes a sharp high note in your head. It seizes on another thought. Yes, you came to Deadfire seeking knowledge too. Hey chat, what do you think? One, do nothing. Two, let's talk instead. Why don't you ask me what you want to know? Three, go ahead, I've got nothing to hide. Four, I don't want you in my head. Five, cipher, shield your mind. Six, get out or I'll end you. We've helped several Vithrax in the past. So I'm hoping that perhaps we won't be immediately turned. Yeah. Two votes for two, one for three, pretty good indeed. Sorry, three votes for two and one vote for three. Let's go with two. Let's talk instead. Why don't you ask me what you want to know? The language of tongues is a dull, tedious thing. It snaps its mandibles together. Why ask when you can see for yourself? Well, because you're rude. The Vithrak reaches further into your mind, plucking and picking at your memories. A watcher, the deerwood, the wasteland of the white that wends. Wait. Yeah, well, that's a good point, Loxie. We could wait, or I could go for votes. So, one, wait. Two, I don't want you in my head. Three, get out, or I'll end you. Four, shield your mind. Shield your mind is a cipher ability as well. Because we are a cipher. Two votes for four, pretty convincing so far. And that's a third vote for four. I'm gonna press number four, shield your mind. The Vithrak withdraws, grinding one of its mandibles peevishly. We wish to only see, to know, yet kith hide and hoard their secrets. I don't trust this creature at all. He eyes the Vithrak and looks toward the exit. The creature's probing psyche traces a question in your mind. Strange companions stand perfectly still, waiting. What are you doing in the gullet? We dig. There are many mines here with many secrets. Many depths with even more. A city under a city. Another in the ruins. 
It teems with young secrets, rivalries, and betrayals. We seek the older secrets, buried deeper and carved on weathered stone. Your friends, the broken down creatures of this place, they know the old secrets, they know, but they do not tell me. Will you tell me a secret? It snaps its mouthparts together in irritation. Not when you have been such a miser with your own. Hey everyone, one or two. One, fine, I'll tell you a secret. Or two, very well. What do you think? We're gonna make friends with this Vith Vithrak? It is very creepy. Ooh, we're looking for a couple of votes for one. Three votes for one, one for two. Fine. I'll tell you a secret. I assume you're volunteering one of your own. He <laughs> coughs delicately. Yes. I was nearly killed by Aethys and restored by Bereth. It stops and considers one fang trembling. You feel it tasting your thoughts for the truth. Yes. You have been generous with us. The ogres nod slowly. There is a place below the slums. Old, cold, and abandoned. Where the city swallows those it wishes forgotten. Huh. But this place was once part of the city. So was its temple. A site holy to the goddess of distant, forgotten things. Its eyes gleam. Will you tell me a secret? Not Fine, I'll tell you a secret. Yes. The gods were created by the Anguithans. Yes. You have been generous with us. There is a place below... Oh, the same thing. this place was once part of the... Come on, dude. I was hoping it'd be a new, interesting... Give you multiple different secrets. What a jerk. I don't like that at all. Cool spells. Dragon scaled grimoire. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's a scam. We told him multiple secrets. Oh, well. Animalism. Athletics and survival. Well, it could be useful. If I remember to put it on before we do something complicated. One scepter. Otherwise, he's just... He's Ability activated when he's bloody Gant grants. Oh, cool. All illusions, power levels. Oh, cool mask. Maybe regeneration. Oh, extra health. Oh, not that useful. Anyway. Wizard. Something I'm sure. What a fan fucking tastic. Random vendor who sells wizard stuff but you can spend that long in conversation with. God, does that make the world feel alive. It's super interesting. Tell him he's dreaming. An old woman stands over a table laden with herbs and spices. She mixes them without looking at her work, pausing now and then to raise a sprig of vial to her nose. You realize she is blind. It's the smell of cardamom that drew you, no? Perhaps the sting of fresh pepper. Or maybe you seek something with a stronger bite. She swivels her ears, but her cloudy eyes do not find you. What do you sell? Food, of course, and supplies for the road. Though, most here come to me for poisons and venoms. I need supplies. I have plenty. Though, if you're buying poison and ailment, mind you store them separate. Smart. Eleven secret herbs and spices. Delver stew. No crew morale. Ugh. Just gives max health. That's not bad, but like, if the locals are to be believed, the mystery is part of the dish's charm. It has a musty off smell. Ugh. Okay, we're good. Otherwise, buy some cool stuff. Stone joint. Poison. Salt applies poison on the next weapon attack. 
all these cool things you can do to add to your fights if you're being extra clever. Things I never get around to doing. But I am definitely gonna add like crowbar, flint and tinder, some more thief spotty, because it's just so useful to be able to steal. Something I can do? Hey. Right. You return to the darkness and squalor of the airlines. Alright, let's go to the gullet. <laughs> Don't need to spend any more time in here. Would you believe I didn't remember that at all? I had out. My tummy hurts in a throwing up way. Oh, Vela, no. Can I interest you in some Dilva stew? That Dawnstar may be it's able gross. to help. What say? Help how? Poison me? Akira, no thanks. <gasps> Forsaken cat? Not on my watch. Three defenses against body and mind affliction attacks, and... Bonuses against poison disease. Well, that's nice. What do you need? Yeah, not on my watch, my friend. We'll take the kitty with us. You know, I don't remember a character called Ickus from our real monsters, but... Makes sense. The flasks are empty, but for the cross two residue, reside, I guess, of used up medicines. The woman bends over a pile of dried, bitter smelling herbs. She's crushing and mashing them on a dirty scrap of parchment, coughing with effort. She steps in front of you to block your way, wiping a ragged sleeve across her roomy, bloodshot eyes. Oof, doesn't sound good. Okay. Got nothing here worth selling or stealing. You best be on your way. She stifles a creepy cough. Are you ill? You hear a muffled hacking and the unsteady rhythm of labored, wheezing breaths coming from the back of the room. Nothing a little ginger root and some bed rest won't cure. Please, let me be. She takes another step, blocking your view of the room beyond. The herbs on the table give off, give off an odor that scratches at your throat. I hear people coughing in the back. She shakes her head and sighs. <sighs> it's hard to keep them quiet. <coughs> <coughs> Good job, you guys. She lets loose with another fit of coughing, loud enough this time to echo in the small dwelling. She finishes and wipes a fleck of blood from her mouth. There's some sick Raparu in the back. Not much I can do for them now besides keep them comfortable. She looks at the crimson speckle on her wrist. And hidden. Is that wise? Keeping a room full of sick people in the most crowded district in the city? He glances around as if you can see noxious vapors in the air. It's better than leaving them to wander the district. I can give them a dignified death, if nothing else. Uh oh, plague. Why are you hiding sick people? Because they've got drowner's lung. Spreads like gossip and kills even faster. What's Drowner's Lung? A gift from the Valians. She scowls, dabbing the room from her eyes. Fills your lungs with fluid. Gets you coughing all the time, trying to clear them. One of my patients coughed so hard, she broke a rib. Oof. Eventually, it gets so bad, you can't hack it out. You just lie there, struggling for breath, until you choke on your own phlegm. I hear it's a long... Hard end. She trails off for a moment, a distant look in her watering eyes. I heard some Raparu had gotten sick, so I brought them here to care for them. City healers don't come down here. She frowns and gives her nose a vicious swipe. Realized what it was when I heard the rattle in their chests, the way they gasped for air. She wipes the back of her hand on her leg and shudders. Only cure is an elixir made with pine seed oil. It costs a lot. Though not nearly as much as an epidemic. That sounds familiar. Still, if news of this outbreak gets out, these poor souls will get tossed into the old city. No one with any money in Nekataka spends it on the Raparu. I see. Is there any way to get a cure? You can get nearly anything on Delver's Row. Hmm. Only trouble is finding it. And paying for it. We should be able to help with that. Unfortunately, the children of the Dawn Stars don't have many connections in this part of town. She turns away, whooping and hacking into her arm. But you might. 
because we have not meaning any offense just that you seem like someone who's comfortable on that side of town relatively high street wise need something easy medicine her eyes watery and red dart between you and the vial you hold she cots into your fist that could save an awful lot of sick people she wipes her hand on the on her shirt and holds it out to you giving the medicine she takes a bottle from you and uncorks it a sharp, a sharp piney odor escapes she breathes it in and smiles okay so um guys uh chat not just guys sorry about that um i straight up do not remember picking it up so it's probably one of the chests that is auto looted so yay <laughs> drown as long med medicine that's the stuff all right <laughs> thank you that's from me and from the children of the dawn stars oh priest restoration power level burn armor rating great if only we had a priest <clears throat> If you'll excuse me, I better start treating the sickest ones. Mm -mm. Like, I love this idea. I love being able to help people. Scroll prayers, summon Juana script, or stash in the shrine. But I didn't expect to already have the solution in hand. And bitter smelling sludge fills the cups. I'm glad, and I hope they feel better soon. Also, probably gained a lot of rep with the Dawn Stars. Good. <laughs> no one deserves to hurt like that, especially not when they can be helped. I heard you and Isselmir again. I do wish you would stop encouraging her. Real sorry. You've caught the eye of someone important. Keep it down. Well, that's a shame we can't uh, hear the dialogue between Adair and Aloth. The cloaked figure sidles up to you, hidden behind a raspy whisper and a long, drooping hood. If you're interested in making good pay, and a good friend, head to the Narrows at the western end of the gullet. Once you reach the alleys, go right, and right again, as soon as you can. Then, follow the bend to the left. Hmm. Okay. The bullies guarding the door have a weakness for chewing's fev. You can follow their trail. Her teeth flash under her hood. Tell them Dario sent for you. And remember your manners. Alright. You think I care about your childish jokes? What bothers me is how she doggy is my grimoire. And you keep bringing her out. Just looking to lighten the mood, I guess. Don't be a dick, Alloz. So, that was probably because we gained reputation in the gullet. It was enough to make uh, this section of the city be like, Oh yeah, we, we, we trust, or we like, Slam Shadows. Aren't we meeting someone here? No, just looting all this stuff. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, wise person. They don't have an official elder in this part of the city because it's a caste system. So... Whoops. Hey, can I help at all? No, it's Enoi, not Thales. Who's Thales? Why do we know where, who they are and where their home is? Oh well. Anoi. An elderly Roparu man squints in your direction before blinking profusely. He hobbles closer, bare feet slapping on the splintered floorboards of his abode. Mm. What say you, boy? Don't call me boy. He peers steadily into your face, blinking faster all the while. The man's arms are as thin as sticks. What teeth he has are yellowed or black from years of malnourishment. Can you see me? Do you, do you know who I am? I see much and many things. Hmm. I simply do not look with these eyes in the same manner that others do. Right. I have heard much as well. You do have a reputation in the gullet then. People speak of your kindness, watcher who chases Zayathus. Huh. I also hear the Raparu's heartbeat grown thready. And pained. Now a watcher comes to the gullet, as Amira has shown me you would. Amira, one of the most important deities of the traditional Juana pantheon, Amira is a bird goddess who hatched the world from an egg. The Juana often worship her as Hylia. There you go. Different names for the same divinities over different places make sense, especially when the divinities are in fact an imposition. The Anguissans put them on the world. Having different names and different stories for them makes sense. 
that's just uh, efficient. And if you don't, uh, like if the divinities are themselves like large enough divine figures that they can interact with the world, uh, but only interact with certain places, you gotta have a reason for it, right? That's weird. Actually, a starving beggar sent me to speak with you. His lids half close, heavy with thought. The Raparo are being crushed from the top. We starve so slowly. It is an agony. Yeah, that sounds bad. This is the Juana way. The fish of our nets are drawn for the tribe. The fruit of our fields, too, is reaped for the tribe. And the coin of our pockets belongs not to one, but to all. Well, I like that idea. All spoils are gifted to the whole of the tribe. The tribe then partakes from the top down. From the most deserving to the least. Why are the Raparu the least deserving, the last to partake of the tribe's spoils? The Mataru risk their lives to protect the tribe. The Kuaru provided skilled goods and services. So, Mataru being warriors and priests, the Kuaru and artisans and merchants. The tribe takes care of the Raparu more than we contribute to the tribe. Or it did before our numbers swelled too large. Hmm. The dawn stars would feed us, but the guards forbid them to pervert the order of sharing. There was a man who helped us, a soft-hearted pirate named Ulug. He worked with the Principe Captain, Mad Morena, they call her to bring us food from the black market. Hmm. But for days now, we've had nothing. What happened? Ulug was never late with his shipments. Always very conscientious. A good boy. For him to disappear for several days without word, he must be dead. That's bad. The Queen refuses to increase our share of the prize share. Without Ulug's shipments, we will surely starve. I am asking you, what else can we do? I can re-establish a smuggling operation through the black market. The starving sated and the pirates paid. Everyone's grins and giggles. Savvy play, Cap. Worthy of Romaro himself. Seraphim smiles and bats his belly. As long as it doesn't end up going wrong for the same reasons. Good point, Adair. He strokes the end of his chin. You must find Delva's row, boy. They keep a lift that will take you down to where the pirates play. Surely you'll find Ulug's contact there. <laughs> if you do not know your way to the row, someone at the hole may be able to help you. Follow the path that Uluk first walked for us, but do not meet his same end. I mean, I don't want to, sure. How else can we resolve the food shortage? If we cannot convince the Mataru nor the Principi, I believe the Dawn Stars may help us. Yeah, well, they we already know they're trying to help. Peatley is a child of the Dawn Stars and has become the Gullet's most cherished healer. I believe she would willingly hear your request for charity. Sure, but like, she, we know she didn't have the money. Speak, and I will listen. Okay, we're well, looking for a place called Delva's Road. You mean the black market that lies nestled in the depths of the Narrows? Of course. The guards do their best to stomp it out, but they are a single boot against a thousand, thousand ants. ants. Very ah, good. them pox-riddled arborogs would be better served taking towels to the sea for all the drying they'd give it. <laughs> the old man nods. I do not know how to get there, but someone at the tavern might. Right, now that we've dealt with all the business and picked up all the quests we can, who are you? 
I've lived for many years in this gullet. My skin and bones have withered with each year, twisted harder, so that the Raparu now call me Paki Takiri. Hawana for big person. The Paki Takiri is a role within Hawana tribes for the purpose of resolving civil disputes. Rather than taking on the duties of leadership as a chieftain would, the Paki Takiri offers wisdom and guidance to the tribe, acting as an advisor and negotiator as needed. Though you can see, I am not very big or much sturdy. If a dispute arises within the gullet, I will see it resolved. That I can promise you. An overwhelmingly important role in any community or group or settlement is like person you can bring your grievances to to talk you through and act as a mediator. And it's kind of undervalued in our current society. Um, I feel like taking the place of that a lot, we have lawyers. <laughs> but they still exist, they just roll into other sort of positions. I imagine among certain communities, priests would uh, and clergy members would deal with this. Like, uh, also, counsellors. But counsellors do it as a professional service as well as mediators, and they're coming from external to the community. Think about it. If you, in your friend group, you've got an issue with person... Yeah, person A is an issue with person B. Uh, you can go to responsible person three who will help you talk it through, provide you advice, and solve it. Maybe even bring up a meeting together where you want to talk it over. As long as person A and B trust person C, that's perfectly valuable. And maybe I'm tooting my own horn, but I'd love to be that kind of person to help resolve those disputes and keep communities together. One of the reasons I'm doing a counselling course, right? One of the many. I'm happy to perform that. That's super exciting. Anyway, tell me about the gullet. What's the history of this place? Both time and tragedy have rotted the gullet into a place of filth and crowdedness. I mean, did it start like that? Once, we Raparu lived in a fine neck of the city. But that time has fallen. Hmm. And with it, the ruins of our old city under Naked Duck. Yeah. Long before the foreigners swarmed us, a sea quake rumbled our city, and the mountain cratered down. Many cried to Andra and were swallowed for their efforts. His dead eyes flick side to side. Now the Mataru send us into the ruins of the old city to be punished. Within that pit lies darkness and death. Not silence, but an end. Farewell. Oof. Enough had. A lot to level up, sure. The level up music is just so good. Gotta have the missiles. Aloth, tentacles, please. We're back, baby. We got ourselves the tentacles. Happy to go. Again, increased penetration. Yes, please. We'll think about those later. Spell shaving. Oh. That could be good. We might do that soon. In fact, no, I want both those spells. Good job. Very chill episode so yeah. far, that's for sure. Just talking to some people, exploring the gullet. Hmm. Okay, I'm making an executive. Shame I weren't at that animancy trial. My mind would have cut Theos's plot to bloody ribbons. Indeed, it's a wonder we ever stopped Theos without you. <laughs> Don't let it discourage, lad. Or wager silver you can keep up. How generous. Yeah, it's very kind. I'm making an executive decision. We're gonna come back to the gullet in just a little bit, but I want to pick up the party member I've been making references to ever since like episode two. So I'm gonna go in that direction. Please, I did nothing. 
You see a man being dragged along a rickety draw a boardwalk towards a rusty cage that swings over the abyss. He strains against the guard's grip. The guard delivers a savage backhand. Enough! Or do you wish to consign her to the old city as well? The warrior casts a meaningful glance at a woman standing a short distance away. Let him go! She screams at the guards, but she doesn't dare approach. The man notices her. His, fi his face lights up with shame. Fear! I'm sorry! I your tongue flops like a dying fish. I tire and stink. Lower him down! What is going on here? The guards drag the Rapiro into a metal cage and lock him inside. He shouts and rattles the bars as it is lowered over the edge of the platform. Eventually his screams are lost to the depths. May Tangelo and devour your souls, you cold-blooded eels. We straight up cannot intervene. What the hell was that? She doesn't stop to speak to us, that's fair enough. So, hey Tango, what the hell was that? Be careful. A guard folds his arms, watching the activity on the walkways through slitted eyes. A cold piercing juts from his lower lip. He notices you with a sharp nod. Why was that man sent below? Otaro? He associated with foreign criminals. He spits. The gob of saliva is just one more spot from the weathered and mottled boards. I cannot be certain about Biha, so I let her go. But I will be watching her. These wicked sorts overrun the gullet and corrupt the Raparu. Our justice must be swift and firm. Where does that lift go? To the old city, Ikira. A god's cursed ruin filled with walking corpses and abominations of the deep. <sighs> and the remains of lawbreakers and troublemakers. Ooh, that's bad. The gullet is no place to wander. Watch yourself for rowdies and pirates. Where is Biha now? Hers is the first house you come to. Just there. He points southwest across the walkways. You will probably find her there. I want access to the lift to the lift to the to the old city. Are you mad or merely lost? That place is a punishment for the lowest sort. He waves a hand toward the exit. Go and explore some place with pleasant views and fresh air. The harbor, or Periki's Overlook. Nakataka has a rich history and some of it lies buried. I must see it for myself. He shakes his head. Your neck, Ikira. He whistles and the guard standing by the lift looks over at him and nods. We will leave the lift down there for half a day. That should be enough time to come back to your senses. After that, you are on your own. The guard will let you pass. Though I urge you to reconsider. I'm not gonna ask the overseer about Delver's Row. That's asking for trouble. I will loot this great. All right, let's get down. A rickety metal cage swings over an abyss. Your clothes billow with a foul wind from below, and faint screams and roars echo from the depths. Still, you can make out no details from this distance. Go down. You step into the Johnson cage. The door slams shut and your descent begins with a rattle of chains. As your eyes adjust to the gloom, you begin to make out crumbling ruins and shadows flickering between them. The cage comes to rest with a groan. Uh, and Jimbles did not. Like, this is not where we pick up a companion. Um, I got distracted. By being able to solve a wrong, right? Let's see if we can save a person. Then we'll go back to pick it up. It is break time in 14 minutes, so uh, while our friends in the VOD can just skip along, and cheers to everyone in the VOD, it's good to see you, and just skip the, f the 10 minute break, everyone else will have to wait and stretch and have a nice time rolling the muscles in our body before we get back to it. Oh yeah, well that's no good. Ah, uh, damn it. Be discreet. If there's a soul that hasn't yet traveled into the beyond, to the other side, into the wheel from the beyond, they're probably a recent death. Let's deal with a ghoul. A rot gasp behind us. Which is dangerous because, you know, Veil is back there. You cast some spells. Alos, I actually need you to hold this pestilent rot gasp off. Seraphin, no particular abilities yet to do that. Let's have our good chanter friend. Oh, he's only got come come soft winds of death. 
We don't need them to use that because I don't think concentration from enemies. I'm not going to do that. Let's just use Come Come Soft Winds of Death and also put on. Oh, we can't. Oh. Yeah, do that one, my friend. You can both deal damage to the pest rock blast. You, you, are still, you are still a barbarian, so maybe let's use your barbaric yell. And that might help. We want to get a knockdown so it doesn't try and get us from behind. In the meantime, Seraphin, you got any cool abilities to use yet? Doesn't have enough focus to cast anything. Perhaps I strike. Blind enemies. Show them how it's done. Starting with four freezes. Slam, can we get up in there? Do ourselves a bit of lightning strike and our missiles will go off. Excellent. Dare. The blind went off, so it'll be even easier to survive. Let's go. I'm attacking Vela. Good thing he's blinded. Right here. Quite enough to do anything yet. Interrupting and not the knockback allies, still not worth it. Can improve our friend. Strong in this life will help us pass through. That's this. it! Perfect. Hey there. Now that we've got a full party. We're having a bit more fun with the combat system as well. Like, that's why I was narrating the whole thing. This body has been savaged by many claws and fangs. A cloud of essence hangs over it. You recognize it as belonging to Bataro, the man you saw lowered from the gullet earlier. This soul remnant pulses with urgency. Well, maybe we can help before he passes on. You prepare yourself for the now familiar jolt and feel yourself pulled into one of his memories. You're being dragged towards the cage, but you're not looking at it or the darkness below. Soon there will be nothing else for you. Overseer Hitenga is holding the marked coin, the Sulane, and glaring at you. You've already tried explaining yourself, but it's no use. He knows where you got it. He tucks it into his pocket. Instead, you look at Biha, furious and heartbroken when she stands beyond the guards. There's something you need to tell her, but she's so far, receding farther by the second. Recall what you need to tell her. You're standing in front of a man. His dark, wizened face reminds you of old leather, but a delicate work of embroidery rests in his lap. He holds out a purse with long, fine fingers. Take it. It's heavy. It's probably more money than you've earned in your entire life. You're trying to let this show on your face. You know what to do. The crime lord nods at you. Yes, Dario. He wants you to pay off one of his associates, bring contraband from the Adra Mill. You've done this before, but never with so much money in hand. You realize this is talking. My people are particular about security, but show them the Sulane and they'll let you pass. You pat your pocket for the marked coin. Yes, it's still there. You leave the lair of Dario the Lean and zip through the narrows, past the spef showing cards, left at the four-way intersection, left again to the gullet. Your hands are shaking, and now you're remembering the rumor Biha told you about of the merchant captain at the tavern. The money is heavy in your hands. It's a risk, but you realize you've already decided to take it. You approach your tavern with your heart in your mouth, realizing that you can't just walk in here holding Dario's purse. You need to hide it. Fortunately, the rubble around you offers plenty of hiding places. When no one is looking, you clear some stones out of one corner and hide the purse beneath them. There, you'll come back for it once you've made your deal with this row time. You're almost starting to feel better about it, too. As Bataro walks into the tavern, the memory fades, and you find yourself once more looking at his corpse. Well. We will follow up on that. We will not stay down here. Sadly, uh, that dungeon is actually quite that dungeon and dungeon is actually quite difficult. Is there some treasure to steal? Absolutely. We can also likely grow, go to the Adra Mill and fulfill the job. The wheel groans of the cage is weight. It's slick with protective oil. But I stand by the earlier decision in that I want to go pick up the other companion. Sadly, we will replace Constantin, but it's with a full companion that has, uh, yes, a romance side quest. And she's interesting, right? I just like her. 
There are a lot of opportunities for us to talk about and discuss her and what she's about and what she does, and I'm looking forward to her endings with whatever we choose. I may be surprised. We may follow through and do what I did the first time I had her. A sacred stair. Look at this map! It's mostly one big temple. It's very cool indeed. Some merchants, Temple of Magrin, the road south, Temple of Bereth, the Hanging Sepulchre, and over here, the Temple of Gorn. We're going straight there and then we're going back to the gullet, okay? I dare you to go inside. So you no. defeated this ship-devouring beast me. all by yourself? I'm telling you, you just have to aim for the eyes. Tangaloa being witness a no beginning. Being an aspect of Bereth. Every day I worry that the Rautai will attack. Oh yeah, you can take there to skip it. Yeah, nice change from the gullet. Um, we're back into like richer areas of town. And you'll see an even richer area of town when we get to the top. Of Nakataka, and I believe probably not today, but we will get there before too long. A dark. So it is you. I could not think of a reason why your ghost should haunt the dead fire, save to haunt me. And that smacks of arrogance. A dark smiles crookedly at you, something which causes the soldier beside him to regard you with bemused curiosity. A dark gestures, and the soldier turns away. He steps in closer towards you, as if to share a conspiratorial whisper, but you notice that he's looking elsewhere, behind you, around you. A name is familiar. Yes, well, not directly the end, but he's from Pillars of Eternity 1. And why do these spirits follow you? More blood on your hands? We were never friends, I know, but when they told me your keep was destroyed, I was sorry to think that you were dead. Adaric was near the end of the White March as he led the Iron Flail from Raid Ceres. We convinced him he was a Watcher. We convinced him, hey, maybe don't, and let him live. Adaric, I thought you'd go back to Raid Ceres. I did in time. Once I thought I'd summoned up the words to explain what happened in the White March. None of it made much sense to the Regency, but my men stood by me. If I was mad, so were they. When the priest spoke of Aethys' return, I volunteered to come, along with a few of my men. I think the Morning Council was content to have me out of the way. Of course, Raid seems to be fascinated and interested to hear what's going on with Aethys rising again. That's putting it all very simply. But then... I suspect few of us have simple reasons for coming to the dead fire. Sorry, Adaric, I lost your sword along with my castle. That sword was only meant to keep you alive through your ordeal. It's fulfilled its purpose. Still fighting about your watcher abilities? Adaric's jaw tenses and he looks away, shifting uncomfortably. I don't know. I came here on a pilgrimage of a kind. Nikataka is full of spirits. And the sea where to begin. Yet I was scarcely off the docks before the Valians were eager to use my condition for their profit. Really? We would not know what that's like. You are a watcher still. Yet you are neither mad nor killed. It's good to see. I found the man behind my awakening and I put my past lives to rest. The cure you sought and which I was weak enough to doubt. See? There. Determination will win out every time. And now, you are on to new challenges. What news of Raid Ceres? Each missive from the Deadfire raises new tumult. Some believe our Lord restored, while others doubt. We've done penance for many long years. None of us know what forgiveness ought to look like. It doesn't seem like Aethys has his mind on forgiveness these days. I'm tracking down Aethys. So, his appearance has renewed your faith as well. I think for once I am content to wait. If our god wishes to speak with us, wishes anything of us, he will give us a sign. The priests pray daily for him. And now we know what Adark feels about it. What do you want from Aethys, Adark? I would know if he has a plan for 
Bring it, Saris. Seem to remember he already had one. This wasn't any good. Thanks, Adele. Yes, play the jealous child. All you knew of his plan was that you weren't part of it. <laughs> Aethys had something he wanted to get done. And he chose Raid Ceres to pay the price. Yet here you are, begging for more. S such an odd statement. Adair still believes, he's still faithful to Aethys. And this is how he feels about he was uh, Raid Ceres being used. Faith is a complicated and interesting thing. Say what you want about dear Woodens, but at least they got a will of their own. Boys, boys, stop. You're both beautiful. You're right. That was uncalled for. <laughs> I apologize. Adaric takes a step back, red-faced. See you around, Adaric. Take care. And may the shining god light your way. I've never seen a temple like this. Take care. No. I was hoping we could say, I'm here to invade and set up a new keep. Um, but I guess not. So that was interesting. Gorn has been detected with a, depicted with a warm smile, but the eyes beneath his hood hold unsettling fervor. So, who is this person? Oh, there's also an abandoned cat. We'll pick out the cat, don't worry. It's also very close to break time. I will, in fact, just leave it in dialogue at uh, 8.29. Oh, congratulations, True. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Beneath the bows of a sprawling oak, two women leaned together, entangled in an argument. One, tall and rangy, 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 blonde and elegant, shudders like a sapling whipped by a wind. Her tanned face is mottled red with her righteous anger. The other woman is human, younger, curvier, and petite, a smudge of darkness to the elf sunlight. She's bent forward, clutching her ribs and looking a bit like a snapped twig. Candlelight and shadows jitter between them. God darn it, Samwin, I wasn't doing any wrong. They were beating him just for begging. Uh, hands on his hips, Seraphin and grins. The older priestess raises a hand as if to touch the light above, or to slap her acolyte across the face. In the end, she does neither, dropping her hand with a scoff, a bearish sound from the back of her throat. Language, Missy. What if your mama heard you speak in that filth? I think she'd tan you up good, I do. Color me unconcerned. So she says, but the acolyte's brown eyes glint with a threat of tears. She straightens, reeling as if she'd been struck. Listen to the argument. Actually, before we do, let's have a break. We'll be back soon, okay? Just a ten minute break, we'll have a nice stretch, and we will return at 8.40, okay? We'll see you soon. It is relatively important to break at this point so we don't, you know, have to redo all the dialogue.
boop and boop. Okay. Just some background noise while I do this. What am I making tonight? Well, not a cocktail, that's for sure. I'm actually, I just feel like a scotch. And focus. Nope. Okay. It's a Glen Moray 15 year. So smooth. Pouring it over some ice in my favorite glass. It's a 50 ml bottle, it's slightly under two standard drinks. One and two thirds, essentially. And given I'm lightweight, that'll be enough to make me feel a little dozy, but not too drunk. It says, Oleron saw sherry matured and American oak matured, creating a deliciously sweet and rich whiskey with a hint of spice. Glen Marais, Speyside, single malt, Scotch whiskey, Elgin heritage, 15 years. Yep. Ooh, that's sweet. Not too much like a bourbon. Lovely. A bit of pepper to it, but not too much. No peat, which is fine. I do love a good peaty whiskey, but not right now. Excellent burn. Lovely bright colour. Hard to tell the dice though. <laughs> okay, let's continue talking to Shoti. <clears throat> this conversation looks like that. Maybe a little hard to read all the text, but we'll see. Seraphin likes something already because she's passionate. Listen to the argument. Sewen sighs. The harshness of her glare softens. Sakes alive! You sure bring out the worst in me, Shodi. Forgive me. She scrubs a hand over her mouth. So, what? You figured you'd take his lumps for him? Shodi wishes, uh, winces, having the gall to look chagrined. That wasn't exactly my plan, no. Let them finish. I can't let you keep stirring the pot like this, Shodi. Think about how it reflects on us all. We're here not only by the grace of Eothus, but also the Queen. She sighs warily. I mean it. Get in just one more harebrained, <laughs> reckless, no good, vigilante squabble, and I'll have you confined to the daughters. We clear? Yeah, see, exactly, Luxie. I don't think it's worthwhile or even a good idea to interrupt anyone by saying, ladies. A small an answer unspoken, the two women split apart. The golden priestess strides hotly away while the smaller, earthier one eases onto the gnarled roots of the tree with a pained cry. Well that's no good, what's going on? Well first let's pick up this cat. I got this, I got this. Yeah, get this. Frau needs. Three accuracy with melee attacks, party wide effect, bonus health. My friend, we what have someone need? who dual wields and needs as much accuracy with melee attacks as he can get. I dare say hello to your new pet, Frau Niels. Zoom in, where's the kitty? There's the kitty! What a good little cat, very happy indeed. Okay, let's continue talking to Shoti. Arms crossed, the priestess looks you up and down. You're the watcher who sailed into town on a crest of souls. Yep. I'm guessing you're not here for the baptism. A dare, maybe. You help people. She peers at you, much too hopefully. Seraphin likes this as well. Get into a lot of fights, do you? Her lips curve knowingly. Reckon no more than you do. Seraphin likes that as well. Those two are gonna get along. Some folk need the light to fight the evils in the darkness. Me and my lantern, we're something of a shield. I zoomed in real close so you can continue seeing the lantern. A pained grunt catches in the back of her throat. Much as we can be. Gee, Seraphin is like racking up the positive with her. And that's very funny and very good. Okay. I have a few bandages I could spare. They're yours if you'd like. I gaze downcast. The priestess nibbles at her bottom lip until it near beads with blood. Well, I sure do thank you. You don't need to worry about me. She smiles shyly, almost disbelieving of either your attention or your generosity. See? 
Fingers splayed, she drags her hand slow and hard over her wounds, raking at her ribs as she gasps out a prayer. Sweating and shakily, she lifts her tunic to reveal the freshly knitted, unmarred expanse of skin. Under your appraisal, she bites down on a self-pleased grin. Working on yourself always seems the toughest, doesn't it? I'm Shodi, child of the Dawn Stars and priestess to Gone. At your service. She thrusts her hand out for a friendly shake. Now Dare likes it, because he likes Aethus. You're a priestess of Gorn, not Aethus? A dark smile curves up her lips, her eyes glint with a fierceness. Darn right I am. This here temple is his too. The Sowen will never concede it. The Juana built it, just for Gorn. But that's aside from the point. Why? You know an awful lot about Gorn? Gorn's an aspect of Aethus. I think you mean he's all what's left. You did hear, Aethus died, yeah? When summer and spring have passed us on, well, that just leaves us autumn and winter and gone. Okay, so let's mess over some things. Aethus, god of rebirth, redemption, dawn, spring, and light, traditionally shown as a man bearing a candle and bear wearing a silver crown, believed to have possessed the body of a red seren farmer, Wadewin, during the Saints' War and had been destroyed along with Wadewin at the end of the war. He recently formed his, reformed his essence in the statue of Maros Nua beneath Cad Nua. In the process of pulling himself from Aethus' paths, he destroyed the castle and left the Watcher of Cad Nua at the brink of death. Sure, who's Gorn? Gorn is an aspect of Aethus, associated with death and harvests. His implements are symbolically important. The sickle reaps what, is it, what it has sowed in life, and the lantern guides the deceased down their intended paths of death and rebirth. It's generally believed that Gorn, instead of Barret's avatars, visit those who embrace death with acceptance and understanding. His most fervent devotees are known as harvesters of Gorn. Gorn is an answer of wrongs and imbalances. This, this has contributed no small part to the Deoid's enthusiasm for vigilante justice. Popular regard for Gorn is polarizing. He is appreciated, feared, and characterized by a grim sense of finality. Do all children of the Dawn Styles worship Gorn? Sure. Most of the brethren believe in him, but they believe in Aethys more. She sighs, puffing a tendril of hair aside that had fallen over her cheek. Shame how they got it backwards, ain't it? Oh, Gorn's an aspect of Aethys. I think you mean he's all what's left. You did hear. Sure. Most of the brethren believe in him. Oh, but they believe in baby, we found an infinite loop to max uh, friendship between Adair and Shoti. Shame how they got one, two, three. 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 Okay. So I love exploiting infinite loops so much so that I will get myself in trouble. got it backwards, ain't it? Anyway. Sorry, I'll stop. Um, when I find uh, an infinite loop to exploit, I find it very difficult to not do so, just because I can. <laughs> like uh, n near the beginning of the Baldur's Gate 2 expansion, Throne of Val, there's a point where you can stand and use a bow to deal one damage to a giant that can't attack you back. Not one damage, do some damage to a giant that can't attack you back and will respawn infinitely. So you set one person with ranged weapons up to like aggressive AI and then Alt tab and return later and you'll be max level. <laughs> I couldn't not do it. <laughs> that's a rather in interesting view of it. I figure I'm a bit unorthodox, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong. Oh, I'd love to talk about infinite loops. Um, I really like that there's a concept in magic called going infinite. In magic the Gathering, the card game, it's so much of a known thing that occasionally players will enter an infinite combo where something happens that they're like, oh, I call it, we've got a term for it, it's called going infinite. And I like that. That, that. that sort of colloquialism is cool. I always wanted to see what it would be like if you did that in fiction, like in universe. Ah, he went infinite and therefore used all the power which generated itself to do something. And like, Honestly, you have a side quest or even a marker for an entire campaign where you deal in the aftermath of a mage going infinite. And he generated infinite power for a bit of time and then it went... He did something with it, right? It's cool. It has ramifications. I believe that actually inspired Cameron of Loading Ready Run. His going infinite was um, a mass sacrifice to send someone to godhood and entered the world. Neat! 
Um, I also like infinite loops in RPGs like this because, um, like, what are the consequences here? Adair now likes Shoti a lot? Oh no, such a shame. Uh, perhaps there could be something like they gain a small bonus if their companionship is really high or something, and we'll figure that out. Maybe. Or not. The consequences aren't that bad. Even if it was an experience in that loop, we enter max level. Cool, the game scales. <laughs> Say, if you don't mind my asking, what, uh, what's brought you to my temple? The, the problem... The problem with it is that sometimes you can destroy any challenge left in the game, and I do not have the willpower to resist this sort of Haha, I found a cool thing. It doesn't hurt anyone except maybe me if I reduce some of the challenge. But in a multiplayer game, I don't want to do it. Not really. But here, by myself, absolutely, I'm going to do it all the time. It's hilarious. Like, I didn't hate grinding in Final Fantasy VII R when I found a quick way to get a lot of experience in AP. Um, but I'm not great at grinding in the MMO. I don't know why. You know, it feels like I've won, when it feels like I've found something and exploited it. D doing that process and repeating the loop over and over, especially if it's a low impact loop for me, it's satisfying even in itself. It feels like solving a puzzle. Hmm. Also makes me feel clever, which is important. I like to feel clever. I like to feel a lot of po positive emotion. You could say I have a vested interest in all matters regarding Aethus. You and me both. She scratches at the back of her neck, gaze going a little distant, a little haunted. He wouldn't believe the dreams I've been seeing. It's like I gotta get ready for this big reaping. This worldwide harvest. Like we've never had before. It's gonna be too much for me. Dreams? Nightmares more like. Terrors that come true. She rubs a palm over the back of her neck. Had him since I was a little girl on the farm. Guess Gon was speaking to me even then. Shoulders squared, she pins you with a determined stare. Whatever she's thinking, it's surely trouble. A coy little smile perks up her worry-bitten lips as she speaks next. Think I might could join you? We could do a lot of good together. Me with my light, you with your... everything. Mwah! Found something cool, have we not? Seraphin's eyes close as he nods along. So, like, there's a lot of shitty things to say. Was not. I want to say, who says I want to do good? Her whole face heats pleasantly and she bites back a bright smile. Good and bad. See, sometimes they're the same. Like how change is not better or worse. It's just different. Seraphin likes that skullduggery. So I reckon we could do some bad, too. If it balances things. Fun, 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 Shorty. Why not? Perhaps you'll prove useful in dealing with Aethus. I know an offer rare as hen's teeth when I hear it. Yeah, I'm taking it. She beams brightly. You won't regret this. She steals this shy glance at Adair. Uh, hey. Adair half nods without looking in Shorty's direction. He seems suddenly focused on something in the distance. A tad too eagerly, she saunters close beside you. <gasps> Ta-da! She also comes with a quest right off the bat. Assist Shoti's efforts to shepherd lost souls throughout the Deadfire. Now we need to choose Priest, Monk, or Priest Monk. Ta-da! Gosh dang, yeah, she's fucking cool. I like Shoti, she's great. So, everyone, everyone who's still around and everyone who wants to have a vote. Uh, I'm just closing something. Um... I'd actually like you to vote between Priest, Monk, or Contemplative, which is the Priest Monk. Okay? Yeah, that's better. Hmm, I'm getting some odd lag on Streamlabs, but uh, hopefully the quality itself of what I'm transmitting is still good, it's just the levels don't look perfect. Anyway, so Priest, Monk, or Priest Monk? Any good reason to vote from pure priest? Not really. I'll show you the uh, ability tree. Like, she's a monk. That's cool. So you get... She has the subclass of Sister of the Reaping Moon. Because she's most effective against opponents who are already at Death's Door. So they gain a buckler proficiency. And when she kills someone in melee attack, she gets it. But, you know, can use her abilities less frequently.
We didn't end up using a um, previous monk that uh, that much. Oh, dead man, that's not bad. Do any of them balance your party better? Priest! Pri pr priest would balance our party very well, indeed. <laughs> she starts with swift strikes, gets attack speed, gives a quick inspiration. Like, she's pretty balanced. She's created at a very low level. She will level up very quickly. You'll notice that the priest also has a subclass of har Harvester of Gorn. I think when you're a contemplative, she's a Harvester of G Gorn plus a Sister of the Reaping Moon. So let's take a look. Priest, Harvester of Gorn, Monk, Sister of the Reaping Moon. Yeah, so she gets those subclass and can't not. When she's a contemplative, she has Blessed Harvest. Reap an enemy in the name of Gorn. If the enemy is bloodied or near death, they will significantly here will take significantly more damage. Just BAM! A lot of slash damage. So she's a Malay priest as well. Yeah, again, she starts at a very low level and will immediately be leveled up when we get to make a lot of choices, so. Priest itself, ability tree, it's just just the costs, you know. Remember, multi-classing's main penalty is that you don't get the benefits of the top two tiers. So she wouldn't get Hand of Bereth. Blessing of Whale. Any of these large, these endgame casts. Like Great Soul, Prestige. Kinds of the Faithful. But she would also be able to be very good in melee. So we got, it looks like a couple of votes for Contemplative. I got one from Deadman, one from Larksy, one from Trugs as well. Uh, one vote for Priest from Kelly, but with three for Contemplative, I think I'm going to click that one unless someone yells out something at me soon. Larksy, come on. Puns should count as votes, shouldn't they? Oh, true as well. Okay, so <laughs> we've got one vote for, con for contemplative and two votes for priests. All right. <laughs> now, I'm happy to note that this sort of decision does not interfere with the story or quests or their outcomes at the end of the game. I don't think so. Not at all. Uh, those happen through in-game play, not what class they are. Thankfully, right? We're given the opportunity to choose the most appropriate thing for our party and have fun with them. Rather than we have to get it correct to have the correct outcome for them in the end. So I did say that, you know, there was something interesting with her. It's not too late. Now we are at one vote for each contemplative and one vote for priest. Sorry, two for contemplative, two for priest, I'm pretty sure. It's not too late. It's all good. And if we have two for each, I'm going to tie break and click contemplative right about now because we should keep going right <gasps> ding oh no constantin will catch up with you later it's about time i went my own way no you're not going your own way you're having a break go to the ship and hang out shirty hang out for a bit like a moth to a flame so you're saying you're literally a pirate of the mind you sail in and steal people's thoughts behold lass I'm the original psychic piratical. Not hardly. Even I've heard about Malnage. She's a cipher like you, ain't she? Only older. Ugh, had to dredge up my cruel rival. You should know her arsehole itches when mention be made of her. What a nasty hex. Tell me you weren't the one that put it on her. Darn, I hope that doesn't make her itch. <gasps> Hell, or that. <laughs> now I'm just making it worse. I best shut my mouth before I cause more damage. <laughs> I like your style, kid. 
It's okay, Trix. I can give you 10 seconds. I try to give people a little bit more time, but when we're making large-ish large decisions. Yeah. Okay, Jody, first off, you're level 6, so you automatically leveled up a lot. That's cool. A dare already? See, look, I told you, it fucking worked. Sure, most of the preference. Like, I told you it would work, and now, max relationship with him. Which is just funny. <laughs> it's great! What it, what does it do? Literally nothing at this point. <laughs> it doesn't even go in the other direction. But it is funny that it happened. Seraphim likes it as well. Look at all that passion. Good and bad, he really liked the Skullduggery. Yeah. Yeah, but we're just equaling out. We need to do more, make friends. Anyway, that was good. Ah, uh, no, I get your tricks. I was the same in Dead Man's stream last yeah. night. It's like, oh, I am not up to date. Now, Jimbles, didn't she get a cool thing that gives Priest extra restoration level? Good thing she's not a soul monk, huh? Investments have gone. Medium armor. Medium armor. See, she's supposed to be in the fight. Also give her an intellect and power search, because why not? Boost power level. Just a good idea. Power level just makes you slightly better at everything. Shorty's, shorty's sickle. Deflection against melee weapons. Sickle damage on combat when you kill anything. It increases four times. It also increases with religion skill. Also... She has a small shield in the shape of a lantern. All restoration power levels or inspiration power levels or plus one of each monk resource per kill. If you don't, if she's not a monk, she doesn't have that. It's just, I think, slightly better at that. It is a really good buckler that you can increase. You could even make it mythic. <laughs> Ten shield deflection to make it the best shield she could have. So yeah, she's a monk. That uses a shield and a lantern as a as a buckler. And I think that's just pretty friggin' cool. Also give her a cape, because why not? Her sickle is not quite as good. Though Soul Reaper is very good and you can make it into Finality, which deals extra raw damage. Or Urgent Harvest and gets attack speed when killed. So, like, very cool character. Very cool um, stuff. And as a monk priest, we'll get her to, you know, use her holy radiance. As well as power set, As well as her wounds abilities, like, attacking even faster. Mm -hmm. Pretty neat shit. Yeah. <laughs> and as she uses a shield, she can actually be in melee. So if she uses a... Um, gun, I'm pretty sure, so we'll put him in the back. Yeah. Hey, Saywin, I just stole one of your priests. As you approach, a wood elf straightens over an altar to Gorn. Her robes mark her as a high priestess. She arches and cracks her back loudly, a satisfied grin spreading across her face soon after. Jody, I do hope you're not getting into trouble now. Not yet. Who, me? <laughs> no, I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> Aloth didn't like that, but it did. did. She smiles at the sight of a stranger. You're the high priestess of this temple? Do swine stink like shit? She hits you with a toothy smile, eyes glittering with amusement. I'm guessing you're not here to worship. Then what can I do for you? Doesn't this place get a little damp? No more than anywhere else. No sense fighting it. The water sustains our faith. Surely as it does these trees. She winks. You must be getting a lot of people in here these days. Oh yes. People are afraid. Angry. Change can be frightening, but what did any of us come here for, if not a new beginning? You were devotees of Gorn? What about Aether's other manifestations? Gorn's the only one that matters. Jody scoffs. Aloth didn't like that either. Saywin shuts her eyes, exhales sharply, and then opens them again to regard you with a patient smile. The Shining God's got many faces, but they're all his to wear. Divine King Widewind, he saw the dawn stars, telling him of things to come. But it's gone, with sickle and lantern, it's come to the dead fire. 
And in some respects, sure, Aeth is walking over this section of the continent and like reaping souls as he goes and taking their essence for something. That is pretty gawny, isn't it? Our gods returned, and he's gonna bring balance to the world. He's gonna right all the wrongs we have suffered. Dawn will bring a new beginning for all of us when that hour comes. Thanks, Saywin. Farewell. There are some other people we can talk to, but I will, in fact... No, let's not loot from Gorn. The weathered and ancient tree is dotted with buds and nascent, bra nascent branches, and indicating new growth. Hoppings of fruit, bread, and even wine have been set here for the temple. While we there are more people to talk to, we will return. I want to go back to the gullet. Just because like, I'm pretty methodical when working through maps and uh, zones, especially in the city. Uh, anyone who watched <laughs> Pillars of Eternity 1 and uh, enjoyed me going through each one in a row knows that quite well. Did you arrive on the compensation? Well, I'm compensating for something. We can now visit the Brass Citadel. Can't visit Serpent's Crown yet. We can also... We can also go directly to Delvis Row. God, that's good. Yes, please. How useful is that? Are we gonna... By the end, we are gonna get so tired of Vela saying something. Task completed. Delvis Row. You found Delvis Row. Congratulations. We already knew. But hey, we got some experience. Oh, we've got all, enough for everyone but Alor to level up. That's pretty good indeed. We'll do that now. Enjoy your level up music, everybody. Love to increase inside if I didn't think we'd be setting us all behind. It's just Aloth has it, you know. But it's always been a very slam thing to be able to do insight very well. That is a shame. It's served us so well in the past. Okay, Chanto or Cypher, but no, no, it looks like we choose one ability for both classes because we got to power level three. Or we could improve our yeah, it's improve our lightning. Hell yeah. That or memory. Oh, that's just a power. No, no, that will be something using phrases. Works. So it lasts for six seconds, and then lingers for additional three. I don't know. That's not that good. We'll get more of those soon. I want to upgrade and improve. Uh, bounce to additional targets. Less, please. I love that the multi-class, when you reach new power level, gives you one per level. It's just fantastic. Stunning whenever you target a will defense. Increasing penetration with our... Oh, not bad. With our weapon. Otherwise, Pain Link is pretty good. Yeah, let's go Pain Link. If, if Slam was the same way we were using Grieving Mother, i.e. melee mm. weapon, dealing lots of damage, we'd uh, take the extra. Yeah, Streetwise is helping out pretty well. Once you are a rogue, we should, you should upgrade things. If you use your abilities, right, as we do, yeah, extra health all, all the time in combat, yes please. If you're using your abilities, they should be good abilities. They should be upgraded. Also bleed when moving. Or also distract the target. When you're blind, also raw damage over time. All attacks are at a stacking penalty to deflection. That's pretty good. Oh, but that finishing blow has been very good in the past. R remember... Devil of Karok finishing blow for several hundred points of damage at a time. Very good indeed. Otherwise. Full attack, repost. Don't need additional quick items, it's okay. 
That's pretty good. You know, target deflection and miss have a chance of allowing a full attack repost. Now, I mean, full attacks would mean he's dealing a lot of damage with it. Yeah, let's go with a passive for now, and then we'll improve things in a bit. Oh, so many good abilities. What we really need is jump. Well, that's the Captain. thing. I don't know if they can jump. Well, I gotta give them all some spears, right? And then get them to jump as high as possible. <laughs> Look, someone's gonna have it. Someone's gonna have intimidate. Might as well be you. Don't need con. Don't need will. <laughs> Me does enemy steal extra damage to them? That's pretty good. Whenever you kill someone, you level up, uh, get speed. Otherwise, it's like. No. Barbaric blow. Let's just do that. That's a fantastic idea. Ah, now. Hammering thoughts. Here we go. Now, as two hand. As a, yeah, as a melee and weapon damage cipher, we'll get him to do the extra pen on da attacks, right? Now, remember when I was like, someone will have a lot of religion, we don't need to spec anyone else? Well, here we go. Shoti's got us covered. Otherwise, she's good at arcana and alchemy. Yeah, we'll make her do alchemy because nobody else is good at that. As a monk, she gets two abilities. Let's go... Critical hits have a chance to do extra attacks or shock damage. No. Is that only unarmed? Nope. Just all attacks. That's good. Stun. Everyone behind takes crush damage. Soul Mirror. Uh, that's pretty good. Ranged attacks can reflect. That could be useful. I think that's going to be less useful than we assume. Do not need a weapon set? Quest for retreat. We don't need those. Let's do... Let's upgrade this to deal... Shock damage. Hell yeah. We just have Vile Thorns. Don't have spiritual weapon. Oh, that's fine. Don't need weapon and shield style deflection bonuses. No. Not strictly necessary. Those are all pretty normal. Yeah, let's see this one. Regenerate health in an area. Very good. Yeah. I wish we could all what jump for, all Captain? Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Can I borrow a sword? I promise to be careful. Nope. I'd like you to handle a problem for me. Head swooning side to side, he does a cautionary glance, then shoulders straightening, he leans in close to you. Go on. Well, we could have him kill... Have a killer Nezo. I don't even remember who a Nezo is. If anyone in chat does, like, we can have them deal with that, but it seems mostly pointless to have someone killed when we don't even remember who they are. Oh, there's an Ezra. There is something I can get for you, yes? Tell me quietly. He leans in. What do you know about the Spindle Man? Merla. It is a dangerous pest. He crosses his arms and, sh and shudders. When it dug its lair, it did not even ask permission of their... Uh, <clears throat> of the boss. The boss. Do varmints normally do that? Get permission from your boss? Is that all? He shakes his head. They say it is a mind reader. We in Delves Row are simple folk. Quiet folk. Uh huh, I'm convinced. It does not do to have a mind reader nosing among us. You understand me, yes? He inclines his head toward you. Okay. It's a Vithrak. Well and truly in his culture. You shouldn't be a jerk about it. Hey, can we go past, speak to the boss? Is that a thing that's possible? Back up. No shops this way, stranger. Alright, never mind. Well, we'll find another way. In fact, we need, pretty sure we need to go via the um, the passageways. Well, 
Paula showed you did not get a private dance. She wasn't hanging out with us when we stopped. Explore the narrows. You leave the hustle of Delver's Row behind you and fade into the alleys. Okay. Go left. Go forward. You make your way forward, feeling the walls to guide yourself in the darkness. Your hands come away slimy. You smell something foul further down the tunnel. A stench of loose bowels and then, and then a metallic tang of blood. At the end of the tunnel, you find a body slumped against the wall. Stab wounds rend the corpse's clothes and flesh, its arms and knees twisted on natural ankles. This is the opposite of where I wanted to go. Anyway, search the body. Watch over. Sure. You find a secret compartment sewn into the lining of his trousers. It contains a small note and a handful of coins. You gain another copper. Read the note. Ulog. No. Ulug. That's right. There's a new shipment for your power of friends waiting near the lift in Delvis Row. Come get the food before the cave stink rots it. Mad Captain Morena. P.S. Give the old man my regards. I'll put an extra koiki in there just for him. The P.P.S. Don't say I've never done anything nice. Well, this is the poor guy who died. Well, shit. He was stabbed. Why? Turn around. Go forward. Merchant stall. Go forward. Intersection. Uh, left. Zveth. Go left. Better head back, friend. This invitation is only passed here. Dario sent a messenger for me. The guards nod and let you pass, chomping loudly on mouthfuls of sveth. At the end of the passage is a stately door craft crafted of polished mahogany. Through the small slit in the door, you catch flashes of fire cast shadows and bright textiles. The scent of sandalwood and cinnamon oil come to you in a warm draft. Whatever's beyond the door is probably more, far more elegant than anything else you've seen near the gullet. Enter the hideout. Poor guy. Stabbed to death. And he was just trying to help. But why was he stabbed? Let's see if we can sort that out, huh? We also may be able to tell, um, Piriki. Don't keep the boss waiting. Yeah, here's the thing. You very... Leave Very it sillily have um, this chest out of sight of everyone, so I'm just gonna. This calls for it. There. Literally seal from you while yeah. you're not watching. Watch and watch. And that. Yeah. <laughs> Slam does not have very high stealth, so we can't, like, get that shit. The cannon is engraved with the emblem of the Royal Dead Fire Company. Bruiser, healer, sorcerer, thug. Daria! Who are you? Something? A thin, long limbed man holds a handkerchief in one hand and a threaded needle in the other. As you approach, he sets his handiwork aside, and you see an elaborate goldwork pattern embroidered around the edge, the same pattern that adorns his brilliant tunic. You also notice a strange bulk beneath the thin fabric of his trouser legs that runs from, runs from hip to ankle. This boy is strapped. I love you wearing a strap, man. The hero of the Reparu. Visits me at last. I had to go pick up a priestess. Calm down. You must forgive the cryptic introduction, but I prefer to remain among the comforts of home. Yeah, you'll get bored if you're trapped in the house for too long, buddy. Trust us in 2022. He leans forward with a squeak of leather and a rattle of metal. You see something protruding above his boots, the bottom of a leg brace. All right, maybe he's not strapped. Well, ain't you sitting fat and happy in your home while just outside people are starving? He may look like a prince, but he smells like a pirate. God damn it, Shirty. Better to be a prince here than a slave out there. He dips his head in a mock bow. Then he turns back to you. Though these are modest luxuries compared to those at the estate of your friends in Queensburg. His mouth twitches in a smile. But had I only known there was a watcher in my midst, I would have extended the invitation sooner. If I had known you had such a fancy place, I would have invited myself. He shakes with laughter, rattling his braces. I am thinking we could be grand friends, you and I. You cannot have too many friends in Nekataka. Dario bears his perfect, even teeth in a smile. I'll be real honest, Watcher. I don't think this guy's gonna be a very kind friend to us. That was a really good whiskey, holy shit. No wonder it was a, f it was a 15 year. And I need only a favor. 
an insignificant thing for a watcher like you. A Christmas present from and his family. I remember taking a photo of it and sending it to someone saying, hey, we can probably share these. It'll be really nice. Anyway, so I opened that one and it was really tasty. There is an artifact called the Cornet of Waves, which is currently in the possession of a Juana named Takano. We're gonna steal shit for you now. Is that what we do, Dario? I would like you to liberate it. He flutters his slender hands in a way that resembles a bird taking flight. Well, streetwise. Most, most people will be standing like they handle their acquisitions themselves. Alas, none of my people are watchers. And you will see things they cannot. What? Why are we stealing shit for you? Takano is a man of many vanities, as your special gifts will no doubt reveal. Okay. His villa is on the eastern edge of Serpent's Crown. Just downwind of the palace. Cool, we'll go to the rich district and just steal shit for you, Dario. He pauses, tenting his fingers. The opportunist I first hired was too bold and found herself ejected from the district. I don't want to be a dick, but why is this my problem, Dario? With your genteel manners and unique talents, I am hoping you can avoid such complications and persuade Takano. Sugar-free raspberry, uh, apple, apple raspberry cordial in that bottle. I've had two bottles of water so far, so time for some cordial. After all, it would be best to avoid drawing the ire of our Mataru hosts. Sure. When you have the cornet, bring it to me. I will pay you well for it, and you will find my favor useful in this part of the city. What is the cornet of waves? It is an old Juana artifact. A musical instrument of sorts. One hand plays the elaborate decoration in his sleeve. Ages ago, it was part of a pair. But its companion, the Cornet of Deaths, was lost when the old city sank. Huh. Both are said to carry the voice of Andra herself. That's not a bad thing, I guess. I do not believe in such superstition, of course. He frowns. Yet you see the tension in the way he pinches the fabric of his sleeve. He wants that artifact. Badly. You don't mean using insight. You don't mean valuable in the monetary sense. He coughs into his hand to hide his foster. I have told you all you need to know of the cornet. Now, I suggest you focus your sharp mind on retrieving it. Okay, I need to ask about another matter. What do you require? Dario leans towards you. His leg braces squeaking. I need to speak with Mad Marina. Patience. First, you must bring me the cornet of waves. First, we must go get the cornet of Wow, okay. Well, let's be a really shitty person and ask about his legs. A storm, a rash decision, and an accident at sea. One that took my sailing days but not my skill with the needle. He smiles cryptically. Life in the dead fire is unpredictable. Sometimes it takes you in its jaws only to spit you out onto some new shore. The Punjabi seem divided. Which side are you on? What? Don't worry, it'll make sense later. It's weird when games give you this dialogue option, i.e. to ask about a plot that's later in the game. It's funny because it never comes up in tabletop. Like... You don't provide a list of options for your players to speak from, so very rarely are they going to ask about something that will come up and be important much later. Why must we speak of sides, like squabbling merchants from the republics? He makes a face as if he smelled something awful. Once, there were no sides. Only Principi, a people united by common interest and culture. We don't even know that much about the Principi yet. But as our fame has grown, so have our numbers. We know they're pirates and they're interested in freedom. Many of these new bloods have no sense of restraint and little regard for our heritage. His long fingers stray to his shining soul and air. Uh, he ain't blowing ballast, Cap. Don't mean there's a course to be charted back in the golden days, though. With a sigh, Seraphim shrugs. Listen. But we need them still. The new bloods are Principi too now, and many are inventive in ways the old god is not. 
So about the corner of waves. A most agreeable topic. Or so I hope. He draws his hands together and regards you over the long, tented fingers. What is the Cornet of Waves? It is an old Juana art. Ages ago. Yeah. Both. Well, I do not. Same as before. What do you want with it? I have told you all you need to know of the Cornet. Okay. Now, I suggest you focus your sharp mind. Well, see you later. I can't learn about Mad Morena until... Until we get you the Cornet of Waves. Okay. Just gonna hit leave. Check this side quest. Cornet's call. Let me go on. We can't do anything with that yet. You know, oh yeah, we should talk to her. Can't do that. Can't do that. Investigate. Eh. No more work. Check back in a few days. Yeah, we can take a look at that soon. Take food for thought. Recommend a companion. See, this is good as well. It's like. Someone will have more input on it, so take them. You'll notice it doesn't appear with everything. And I think that's good. Of course it's got Alf. It's his quest. Otherwise it's like, yeah, you should take this person along. It's going to be important. I like that. Might be the route. Yeah, we could probably do that then. Sell us a food source. We'll give it a try. We'll find a way to speak with Mad Marina. Well, I guess we're going to go get the cornet then. Kill Paracal. Find B here in the guard. Let's find that, huh? Corner of rubble near the tavern. Let's go do that too. Find a pirate gang that mugged. Yeah. Northern alleys of Queen's birth. Sleeps by day makes trouble in the alleys by night. I guess we didn't do that before. Whoops. Anyway, let's go to uh, We can just go straight to the gullet. gullet. I think we've explored everywhere in the narrows now. I mean, I haven't mapped it. So I wouldn't know. But I'm pretty confident we have. Biha. I got bad news for you, Biha. We tried to save him, but honestly, we didn't make it. Was taking. A woman thrashes a row of tunics and sarongs hanging from the rafters. Her pointed teeth are gritted in frustration and her lips set in a snarl. Her clothes are spotless, yet she swings a handful of reeds again and again, grunting with each blow. Several children huddle together, whispering and looking on with red, tearful eyes. Vitaro is gone. Dead. What more do you want? She punctuates each statement with a fierce whack of the reeds. The children flinch, looking from between you and the woman. Take a deep breath and let's talk about this. Whatever it is, calmly. She looks at you for the first time. A fraction of her anger burns off. Forgive me. I thought you were one of the foreigners who sent him away. Outsiders here always go to the tavern. Not this time. My village was not like this. Why does Queen Onikaza not send the foreigners away? How did you know the man who was lowered into the old city? One of the children starts to say something, but Biha shoots him a sharp glare. She turns back to you, arms crossed, gripping the reed bundle tightly. Bataro is punished already, I say. Whatever offense he gave, do not hang it on our necks. Chicken? She begins swatting at the laundry again, though with considerably less gusto. I know you're scared, but I'm not here to harm you. <laughs> we say the only thing that live in these depths are ghost eels. And fish eaten by ghost eels. She grunts. Which are you? She turns away from you, striking the sarong harder and harder. The traders say they bring riches in their big ships. The fabric pops and snaps beneath her fury. Sweat is flying, spat spattering the clean sarong. But what reaches the gullet? Only crime and sickness, I say. She pauses to take another couple swings at the sarong. Listen. The Rawatayans promise marvels, strong walls, and plenty for all. She moves on to the next tunic, thrashing it with an even greater fury. Akira. Still my back aches from building their fort, and still I live here. And Bataro said we would finally leave. She breaks off, her shoulders heaving as she catches her breath. I'm so sorry. It is only another word. She shrugs, still catching her breath. Outsiders cover our islands with walls and gates. Many Hwana come to Nekataka, but even here, the outsiders crowd us. In the villages, the chieftains know even the Roparu. Here, even neighbors are strangers. That is Deadfire now. She shakes her head angrily. 
I only want to be free of this place. That is how the trouble started. I heard a Rawatine captain took up at the tavern. Suduzo, they call her. They say she is a traitor, so I thought maybe she will take passengers. But Tara went and found her in the tavern. Her eyes go hard and dark. Next I see him. The guards are dragging into the cage. She bears her teeth of the memory. That's terrible. I'll see this put to rights. She looks at you with the same critical eye she's been giving her laundry, ringing and tugging the reeds. Seraphin agrees. Shoti agree agrees. Everyone knows the Rawatayans are made of brass. They listen only to their commanders. But still, maybe it goes different for you. She looks around, taking in the hanging clothes, the huddled, huddled children, the warped and splintering walls of the shack around them. Bataro took some coin. Everything he scraped together working on the docks. And he went to bargain with the captain. I would offer it to you, but it is probably in the old city with Bataro. Or in someone else's pocket. I found Bataro in the old city. He's dead. Of course. I only hoped. She looked away. She looks away. She breaks off, shaking her head. It is no matter. Thank you. For telling me. Tell me about the Rao Tine, Captain. Suduzo. Bio is holding the reeds so tightly that she snaps one in two. They say she is a traitor, so I thought maybe she will take passengers. But she threw Bataro out. She looks down at the broken reed in her hands. Always Bataro was careful with his words, especially as a Raparu. I like it when it's obvious that the dialogue is written so that someone looked over it and edited it and made sure that like it flows properly. In some video games, due to uh, dialogue trees being possible, like go from A to B and then off to C or something, and then sometimes back, like that can make it difficult to keep things logically flowing. This shows care, like someone, a writer, has reviewed over it. Hello, Cupcake the Cruel. Welcome along. Glad you're here to join us. When you can clearly see that someone has edited it and made it so things flow logically, it's good. But a Raparu in Nekataka gives offense just by breathing the air of his betters. How many of you need passage to Rautai? We are six. Three children, two babes, and me. Well, let's use our law, because we are uh, history, because we always use our skills. Does no one else from the case look after them? Akira. It was so in the village, where Bataro and me came from. But here, we are all strangers. No one looks in on the sick or cares for the children. Tell me about this stash of coin Bataro had. Worry greases her face. She sizes you up with a quick look. I tell you, I do not know where it is, and I am sure it would be little to someone like you. She licks her lips. After what happened, Bataro would sooner have thrown it into the waters than given it to the Mataru or the Rawatayans. If it is anywhere, it is surely with his body. Can you take a different ship? She shakes her head. Many ships leave from Queen's birth, but the Valians take slaves. Ugh. She lowers her voice and glances furtively around. They say the Principe smuggle goods in the caverns below, but I cannot trust such people. We don't trust slavers, that's for sure. But the Rawatayans have mighty cannons, and a big homeland they abandon for ours. Perhaps there is more room for us there. Farewell. Consider it done. Two sickly Hoana infants lie swaddled under rags. So, like, I agree, Trux. This is good good writing. Very evocative, very powerful, and really makes plain the plight of the Raparu. Which... You ever thought about changing the color of your fur? Merkberries will stain your skin for weeks. Oh, think I were born blue, eh? Think being this pretty come natural? Well, dang, sir. I never knew you were so fancy. Yeah, but mayhaps I'll be giving them Merkberries a go. Ain't never been marooned before. Pretty good, pretty good. And what do we have here? Ooh, a hidden stash. 600 copper pens. Beneath the dead and mildew, these carvings look very finely detailed. Very old. It's time to go into the hole. So, we're making it clear that the cast system, like, one, not good. And I think it's funny that I think it was Civ 4 had opportunities to set up some part of your society, and it's like, cast system's one of the options. And it straight up did not have learning a lot. an opportunity, like it did not have a positive thing to say about a caste system. And I like, I agree, it's, it's not a good thing. Um, 
clearly here we're saying that a, you know, on a smaller scale, the caste system here works better. It's still not good, but prior share works when there are less people. But there are so many people here in Nekataka that some people are suffering because of it. Well, yeah, that sucks. How did you hear that about the boss? With my own ears. Dario said there's treasures in that pit. Shh! Have you lost your wits? Fiona. An, an all uncovered head, toe to ear tip and sable. <clears throat> an all uncovered toe to ear tip and sable fur leans against the bar counting change. So it gives you a wide, easy smile when she notices your approach and slips the coins into her pocket with a wink. Hey, uh, fresh face. Welcome to the hole. Just got two rules, yeah? Keep your hands to yourself <laughs> and don't fall in. Don't fall in all. Need something? What's the story with this place? <laughs> the hole's been here so long as there's been a gullet. Though it ain't always been mine. What's the neighborhood without a place to get pissed drunk and lose your pants? Yeah, fair. How'd you end up here? Well, it's a bit of a story. See, I was born here. Right here, fresh face. Right on this counter. And I'll die here too, God's willing. Alright. Of course. She spreads her furred hands wide, inviting you to continue. What you need? True, because you're going to have to explain where Queen's Lander came from. You're going to have to tell me about what's going on there. Four just fancy gives stealth streetwise and slider hand. Not a bad rest for a hundred. That's very good indeed. Sadly, we don't need anything extra. We don't need to get Constantine back right now. Range weapons of the suckers. A forgetful knight. 600. Seven crew morale, less damage taken, extra damage dealt, and not good for dexterity, so give those to your melee fighters, and you do well. Water and hardtack available. That's all we need, essentially. It's terrifying considering changing us from blue to maroon, right? Of course, now that's a very Australian joke. You speaking to me then? Go on then. Who imp by round you? Sorry, who by imp round you? The imp belches. The shore imp tries to hand you its empty stein. Imp spray walls to make feel like home. Bartender not complain. He tries to balance on his tail and nearly falls over. I love that there's a shore imp and a shopless imp here. That's fantastic. Food's okay as long as you don't look at it. Or smell it. There's a fifth rack here as well. Beer is good, maybe. Hey, Seduzo. And a Rautine Elementalist. This Rautine sits ramrod straight. On the table near here are a half empty liquor bottle and a small porcelain cup. Both smell of anise. Mmm, beautiful. She looks like she's trying to blend in, but her unnatural stillness and her bright, spotless attire make her stand out like a reef fish against the rocks. Her eyes find yours. Harami! I am here, Seduzo Nui. Do we expect any foreign merchants today? Sidu Seduzo keeps her eyes on you even as she speaks to the soldier. There's only a brief pause. We do not, Seduzo Nui. The captain shifts uncomfortably. Then state your business quickly. I want to avoid another surprise. She glances around quickly as if she expects someone to jump out of another corner of the tavern. What's a business in Negadaga? Nearly done, I hope. I sold a consignment of iron and cultural coral, and will return to Rautai with vorals, murkberries, and Andra stars. She shifts in a chair, tonguing at a conspicuously clean and bright clothes. Are you writing that down? She raises an eyebrow at Seraphim. Uh, nay, lass. We're merely moved to a momentary bout of verse by the beauty on display before me. He clears his throat <coughs> and secrets the scrap of paper into a pouch. Irked, Skaldo as Shorty runs her tongue over her teeth. The Shorty doesn't like Skaldoggery. Let's hear it, Seraphim. Uh, they're uh, very bawdy rhymes, Cap. Not meant for prim and proper mercantile types. He rubs the back of his head. She looks at Seraphim as though he were a particularly talkative rodent. She turns back to you. Anyway, that's what brought me here. She fidgets with her clasp. 
with a cup. Well, we've got heaps of options here. Let's go with uh, Streetwise because it's the highest. Uh, odd that you take your business to the slums, unless you're trading illegally. She sets a glass down with a loud clatter. <laughs> the Royal Deadfire Company would uh, frown on business in this district. But there's no harm if they don't know. She laughs nervously. I see. What is your business with me? What's your business in Nakataka? Nearly done, I hope. I sold a consignment of iron and cultural coral, and will return to Rao Is he nervous? Does the Royal Dead Fire Company stars. know you're trading here? <laughs> what is Same your again. Done, what if we go? I what hope. if Tall Rao Tai's operated out of the Paris Citadel? Most do. If she avoids meeting your gaze, her mouth is pressed into a hard frown. <laughs> All the same. Okay, me? well, did you cross paths with a man named Batara? The one who threatened me. I shall not soon forget him. She stiffens. She raises her cup for another sip, scowling into the liquor. These Huana learn too many pretty words from the Valians. You cannot trust what they say. What exactly happened? This fellow wanted passage on my ship. As if I were the village ferryman. She tosses back the rest of her drink a little too quickly. I told him there was none to be had. Certainly not at his price. She upends her empty cup. Then what? She refills her cup and sets the bottle down hard. Perception, you notice that her hand is shaking. He told me he had coin. Lots of it. I did not believe him. How could a man who lives in a garbage heap have enough money for passage? She shakes her head. But we know where he got the money. So you assumed the worst and threw him to the wolves? Yep. No, you presumptuous Adirin. I assumed nothing until I saw the swollenette. A swollen net? A marked coin. A token of allegiance. The Principi carry them. Oh, go on. I knew then that I was dealing with a pirate. I had heard they were influential in the gullet, but I did not realize how much so. She scowls and shudders. I called for the guards, and they dragged him away. That is the last I saw of him. Biha and the children still need passage out of the city. There's nothing I can do. The passenger quarters have been reserved by a dwarf named Orin. She picks a stray thread from her smooth, crisp jacket. Why do you bring this to me? Hey, chat. What do you think? We've got seven options ahead. Let's get on with it. One, don't you feel bad about what happened to Pataro? Two, Suduzo Nui, they have little here. Think of how they could benefit from Rao Italian culture. Three, you're a merchant, huh? I'll pay you to take him. Four, I won't tell the Royal Deadfire Company about your dealings here if you take beer here and the children. Five, the gullet is rough. I have pity. Six, tell me about Oren. And seven, never mind. So chat, what do you say? What would you like? What are we going to say to this lovely person? Now it's 17 minutes until we finish for the night, so let's make this one good, huh? Larksy, you're keeping up with your well-trod tradition of saying many options. <laughs> Two, if it doesn't work, maybe try three, and six could be done with the first without influencing the others. I'm pretty sure it can. What's two again? Seduza Nui, they have little here. Think of how they could benefit from Rautai and culture. Only note. Kind of like full. Well, that's pretty good too. Give it just a little bit longer before I call it. Oh god. One vote for two, one vote for three, one vote for four, so I can tie break between those three options. Six is more info. Alright, that's true. Well, to be honest, I'm going to press six, because we can get more information. And we'll return to it again. Tell me about Orin. He and his people are gold pack knights. Orin is... <laughs> particular. She looks at her crew and then nod in agreement. Perhaps that is good. He just finished a contract to guard the Valian Luminous Mill. I hear Anamancers are also particular. He's upstairs. 
Just do not interrupt him if he's arranging things. She and her crew exchange another quick glance. Still, nothing I can do. Still need the passage. Why do you bring this to me? I think I'm gonna go talk to Orin. I'm sorry for holding a vote before we knew everything and come to the point of a decision, but let's go talk to Orin and see what's happening, right? Hopefully this is not too much of a hit against your agency and you don't feel cheated of the experience. Don't worry, we'll get experience with Slam Shadows and the others. Watch and learn. Gold Pack Priest. Ooh, a chest. Orin! Hey, I'm just loading all your stuff. The dwarf sits before a generous and curious spread. Steamed mussels arranged in concentric circles, rounds of flatbeds stacked in a neat tower, and melons sliced in even triangles. Yet his attention is focused on the four cups and the bottle in front of him. He has the cups organized in an almost perfect square around the bottle, but as you look on, he leans down to adjust one. The others wait with him wait quietly and observe the ritual. Well, let's wait. Holding his breath, he takes a bottle and measures an equal serving of wine into the cups, making three or four passes over each. His companions look on with practiced patience. Don't see why you'd spend all that time arranging your food if you aren't making it look like a funny face. Oh, I dare. You're perfect. Never change. As the last bottle is empty, he places it in the exact center of the square. He picks it up and puts it down in the same spot twice before he's satisfied. I didn't see what Seduza was fussing about. Nothing wrong with being tidy. Aloth leans close to you and then turns back to observe. Cheers. They all take their cups and drink deeply. At last, the leader turns to you. What do you require? What brings you to the Deadfire? We had a contract with the Valian Trading Company to defend one of their most valuable properties. He glows with pride. If you're looking for work, I hardly recommend them. They pay well, and they pay on time. He raises his cup, and his companions do likewise. Seraphin leans nearer you, grinning. Consistency in the shipping lanes. Good for types mercantile, but better for types piratical. Did you say something? Nope. Ah, just admiring your spread, my lad. Nothing better after a meal than a ripe pair of melons. Wink wonk. I hear you bought passage on Captain Seduzo's ship. Indeed. The good captain has four adequate berths, all equally sized, all facing the same direction. And she's promised to leave promptly. Hmm. A most agreeable arrangement. What would it take for you to see just spots on Seduzo's ship? Out of the question. We're due in Tokoa for another contract, and the client has already paid the advance. He sips from his cup and immediately runs a folded handkerchief around the rim. And we have already paid Seduzo. I couldn't possibly take back the same coins I have already spent. He shivers with dread. I'll make you an offer for your berths on Seduzo's ship. A gold-packed knight is bound by his contract, and ours binds us to make all possible haste to Takoa. He squirms and sets his cup down in the exact middle of a water stain, lining the base up with the edges. Booking passage on another ship on such short notice would be most expensive. I could pay you enough to book passage on another ship. He looks up from fidgeting with his cup long enough to give you a doubtful frown. All ships leaving for Rawatai are laden with luminous Adra and other rare goods. Mercenaries, even of our skill, do not rate so highly. Well, think about it. He, shrug he shrugs, rotating his cup again. Never mind. Someone downstairs is asking for you. No, let's not do that. Farewell. Okay. We do have enough money to pay him. We absolutely could. I'm wondering if there's another way around it. He said all four of the birds are facing the sh same way. That's interesting. What is your business with me? It's nothing I. Why do you bring this to me? Nope. Okay. Hey, chat. I don't think it's a listed number option, but. Uh, what should we do? Do you have a preference? Do we want to pay... Uh, <clears throat> do we want to pay, pay Oren off? Do we want to threaten Seduzo? Do we want to ignore this quest forever? I don't think so. 
We're not doing that. We like solving problems. We're gonna help out be how we should. We wanna do it by spending money? Do we wanna threaten Seduzo? That's uh, up to you. So, type a little something into the chat and let us know what your plans are if you have them, and we'll see what we can do about it. Seems like there are many ways to solve this quest, which is good, and I do appreciate that. Um, this would work even better in a tabletop, because um, I'm actually latching onto something that I think is worth doing on quite... Pay off? Maybe try to have pity and then pay off? Can we try to persuade Zuduza first? Well, let's see what we can do with that, yeah. Try pity. Yeah, that's a good idea, Luxie and Trugs. Um, you'll notice, like, we're jumping to conclusions when we're assuming something about a person, but they are a written person, so they're pretty obvious. Oren clearly has OCD, right? I feel like if we use all those affectations in a tabletop game, players may leap on that and try and find that as a solution. And to be honest, I'd do the same. I wanted to go down to Seduzo and be like, hey, it turns out Oren's kind of, like, precise. Got a quick question. Are all of your cabins facing the same direction? And you walk right back up to Oren and be like, yo, yeah, dude, I'm sorry, but the ship doesn't meet your specifications. And then you get the appropriate quest outcome or a quest outcome that uh, is not bad. But kind of by exploiting either a character trait or a cultural thing, as Luxie does mention, or like a mental illness that could cause significant trouble in his life, and it feels a little mean. But uh, here, just done as an affectation, uh, a nice thing about this NPC, this one quest, it just adds color to it. I think this is a good option. I'm glad that the Obsidian Riders didn't make what it as something you can exploit. It's nothing I Why do you bring this to me? Sedusanui, they have little here. Think of how they could benefit from the Rautian culture. Uh, let's try have pity. All right, the gullet is rough. Have pity. Pity will not pay my debts. Besides, look around. I cannot take every unfortunate to Rautian. I wish. Okay. Don't you feel bad about what happened to Batar? What did remorse ever accomplish? Besides, this Bataro brought trouble on himself. Uh. Her nostrils flare. Yeah, she holds her chin high, but you catch a telltale twitch at the corner of her mouth. Yes. You should have known how to behave around civilized people. She nods as if convincing herself. Okay, let's press two here. Thank you. You're a merchant, no? I'll pay you to take them. I can take three more in the hold, and no more. Oren and his crew have reserved the berths. That is assuming you have the coin. The children are small. Surely you can take more? I will already have to abandon crates of cargo to make room for these three. Plus, the food and water they require. Let me think about it. As you say, it's nothing I could... Why do you bring this to me? They have little. Think of how they could benefit from, Ra from Rautian culture. <laughs> that must be the first time I've ever heard civil speech in the gullet. Sorry, Loxie. She knows that you're used to the respectful suffix. Very well. I could take three more in the hold, and no more. Orin and his crew have reserved the berths. <coughs> well, that's not much fun. The children are small. Surely you can dig more. I will already have to abandon crates of co- Send them to me. The sooner we leave, the better. Well, at this stage, it looks like we've actually successfully convinced her to take three of the five kids, and that's all. We're gonna go upstairs and talk to Orin. We convinced her without spending any money on her. That's pretty good. But Oren, come on. What, what do you do require? Oh, here we go. I'm booking passage for a family, but Sidus only has room for three of them, so they'll be split. His hand jerks her violently that he splashes a few drops of wine on the table. He mops them up, a rigid and pained expression on his face. And you'll be stuck with half of them for the whole journey. Wouldn't that be odd? That will not do. That will not do at all. He's still dabbing at the spilled wine, but something brittle has crept into his frown. His companions shuffle nervously. At last, Oren pushes back from the table and looks up at them. To Queen's birth, quickly. We must find a more suitable ship. The gold packed knights file out together. Well, well, well. 
what a solution we found. A light's foot and an heavy bullet, I cap. A light's foot and an heavy bullet, I cap. That look makes her cry. I see Not where you're there. Just what do can it. I tell you? Break in, steal a cat. Steal a cat? Absolutely. Dude, the six toes cat. <gasps> 20 health restored per kill. Less likely to be hit by attacks. Wow, that's great. Sure, I'm glad we got ourselves a cat. Well, time to tell Sudozo that we've uh, just stolen some births from her ship. Whoops. I think it's a good outcome. I like that. Like, oh, look, there are going to be people on the ship anyway, whether you give it up or not. So it's up to you whether you want to live with that. With me? Oren won't be traveling with you anymore. She eyes you suspiciously, the soldier with her shrugs. That's convenient for you. But never mind. If there's trouble, I'm staying out of it. Well, we didn't kill him. The births are paid for. You can send your friends as long as you promise not to make trouble for me. She glances from side to side, checking to make sure no one is listening. Just do it soon. I don't want any mess you've made to spill onto my decks. She looks at her crew and makes a twirling motion with her finger. See, the funny thing is, Suduzo, I didn't hurt anyone. Oh, worried pig. I'm starting to miss the gruel and gilded veil. Onyx the pig, one perception. And enhanced defenses against attacks that provide a disease. Why, I'd love a pig. I got this. I got this. Meats of unidentifiable origin strewn across the counter. Why do you bother me, little kiff? Hey, I'm not little. You're all little to me. She squints her broad, sloping brow, wrinkling in consternation. Little? And squishy. You enjoy working here? No. She hawks a fat goblet of spit. It lands beside the food she's preparing and splatters. The gullet reeks of illness. The beds are too small. An imp tried to nest in my hair. And Firna, the tavern keeper, refuses to give me more than one day off a month. How am I supposed to hunt when I am chained to this stove? She scrunches her face into a grimace. <laughs> Maybe I'll become a pirate. Get myself a bird and an eye patch. You should join my crew. How do you mean? She narrows her eyes and regards you with renewed interest. You know, like on a boat. I'm not daft, you condescending little mite. Tell me why, and in what capacity, I should join your crew. She grunts. Capting her tenderizer high, she slams it down on a dubious looking piece of meat. It makes a wet plop, splop sound. My crew hunts a god and needs someone to feed them. You're after the Audra Colossus? Well, I wouldn't mind sailing in his wake. She gives you an exaggerated wink. So will you join my crew? I don't work for free. Well, we'll give you some 450 copper. Will this satisfy you? She examines your coins for a moment. They look tiny in her giant hands, almost like a child's plaything. She shrugs. Yeah, this will do. For now. She, puts, she pats her meat tenderizer thoughtfully and gives you a small nod. Now she's left, we can steal everything! <laughs> we still have Cosmo? We absolutely do. We've got heaps of them. So, she's just... She's a novice helmsman and a cook. So, like, as good as Beardil. We don't have a large enough ship to need any more people, so we have an in-resting crew. It's not a bad idea to have a lot of resting crew. We need to pay them, but I feel like we're fine. An armored man stands by the far wall, observing a more lightly clothed woman as she busies herself with a handful of wires. Room falls silent, and you find yourself the center of attention. We've no intent to disturb you. <laughs> Please carry on. Well off. Bayer, I don't know this one. She nods towards you. We ask not to be disturbed. What are you doing here? He grips his weapon, weapon and studies you. Are you one of the Badadar guards? Well, that's the end of subtlety. Bayer readies his weapon, his features hardening in resolute expression. You told me you weren't followed! It's Ali can't know that I was here. Bad news for our new friend. He clenches his jaw and advances. Bayer hefts his weapon to square off you while Persis scrambles for cover. Alright, I mean, I didn't expect that, but sure. Inf inflicting freeze damage to a large amount of enemies? Uh, let's not yet. 
Look, Shoti, just go in and deal some damage, okay? Phantom foes on all enemies. Give all enemies flanked. Aloth. Tentacles, please. Move up a little bit. Get some tentacles going. Jeez, you lost hit, hit points real quickly, buddy. But luckily, we'll be able fair. to get a third level cast now. It's moved. Get some lightning damage out. Good job, Slam. Lots of bouncing damage there. Very good indeed. We can do Holy Radiance, which is healing. Get a dare back up, which is very good indeed. But now let's also gain lightning strikes. So we've got three phrases, not four yet. We can also. Well, they're all pretty well injured. We don't need to do this just yet, but. Paralyze an enemy. Let's do that. Let's spell it. Shirley did some healing to everyone involved. Very good indeed. Yeah. Priest is flanked now with a rogue at his back. Excellent. And Seraphim just dealt a lot of. Mm -hmm. Well, alright. Look at all this stuff. Vault schematics. Crudely drawn map of the vault underneath the bad out of a state. Well, that's interesting. Some fresh fruit. Ooh. Mortification bindings. Mm -hmm. Good thing we got a monk, huh? Plus two max modification. Uh, restored, ready to be used in the next combat. So that's just per fight you abilities, for? not the wounds. The foot and an heavy bullet are kept. It's a shame Pertzer is seeing us so that we can't steal shit. All right. Ahoy, aye, aye. No. Okay. Hey, Pertzer. You, you killed him. Let me go, and I won't say a word about what Can happened here. Oh, it's past 10 o'clock. That's a good point. <laughs> we'll finish up after this dialogue. She purses voice quavers fearfully and she's rooted to the spot as if paralyzed. The Bardato sent you, right? No need to kill me over a family tiff, eh? Relax. What's your part in the Bardato job? You're clearly not muscle. I just check for traps. Belder and her crew are the vault crackers. Not my line of work. Okay. This job? I'm out. It never happened. She slaps her palms in a dismissive fashion and holds them out to you. Belda's plan was for everyone to converge on the Bardato vault. Okay. You won't find me anywhere near the Bardato fortune. Can we agree that that's worth sparing my life? Get out of here. I... I think that would be best as well. Consider me gone. I'm not gonna kill you. But, but the Bardato's mean nothing to us. Well, well, well. Three past ten, time to finish up for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I've had a very, very good time chatting to you. Highly enjoyable game tonight. Mm -hmm, yes, please. Thank you very much. I don't have anything deep and meaningful and particularly interesting to say other than that was an enjoyable little game tonight. I hope you learned a little bit about role-playing games and have set our week off to a good start. Otherwise, I'll leave you off again and i'll see you wednesday night for the end of final fantasy 4 at seven o'clock as always it's going to be very exciting i am ex very excited for that one um oh shout out to everyone uh, who tunes in week after week it's lovely to see you turning up uh, tuning in and joining and voting for particular options and it was also very nice to see everyone at the vods watching through and having a good time with pillars of eternity uh, it's been a sincere pleasure to do this. Now remember to tell the people you love that you love them very much and uh, if you want to do the same, I'll reach out. You know who you are, I love you very much. And I'll see you again Wednesday night. Good night everybody. See ya. <laughs>